Please be alert at all times during today's games. Baseballs can accidentally fly to the seating areas. Be alert to the action in NCAA. Wants everyone to have a safe and enjoyable day. Watching the best college baseball in the nation. Thank you. Once again, fans, welcome to Walker Stadium, Good Heart Field, for today's Division II Central Region Championship. At this time, let's meet the players and coaches for both teams. We'll start with the visitors on the scoreboard today, the Southern Arkansas University Mule Riders, led by head coach Justin Pettigrew. Welcome to the field, the Southern Arkansas Reserves, coaching staff, and athletic trainers. And now the starting lineup for Southern Arkansas. Leading off, playing second base, number 13, Chris Sutton. Batting second and catching, number 32, Brett McGee. Batting third, playing third base, number seven, Brandon Nickel. Batting fourth, playing first base, number nine, Jacob Machuca. Batting fifth, playing center field, number two, Ty Manning. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, number 24, Tucker Burton. Batting seventh, playing left field, number three, Chris Lyles. Batting eighth, playing right field, number 11, Connor Allen. Batting ninth, playing shortstop, number 26, Riley Orr. The starting pitcher for the Mule Riders is number 31, Wyatt Marr. Fans, those are your Southern Arkansas Mule Riders. And now for the home team on the scoreboard. 
the Augustana University Vikings, led by head coach Tim Huber. Fans, welcome to the field, the Augustana Reserves coaching staff and athletic trainers. And now the starting lineup for the Vikings. Leading off, playing first base, number four, Max Mosser. Batting second, playing center field, number three, Carter Powell. Batting third, playing third base, number one, Jordan Barth. Batting fourth, the designated hitter, number nine, Will Olson. Batting fifth, playing shortstop, number 23, Jack Hines. Batting sixth, the second baseman, number two, JT Mix. Batting seventh, playing right field, number 13, Jackson Rosencrantz. Batting eighth and catching, number 14, Dre Dirksen. Batting ninth, playing left field, number 24, Ben Erke. The starting pitcher for Augustana, number 20, Tanner Brown. The Augustana University Vikings. Fans at this time, we ask that you please rise to honor America and those who serve it for the playing of our national anthem. Domino's is open for carryout at the drive through and delivery. Domino's has contactless options for delivery as well as carryout. Call Domino's in Magnolia at 870-234-4141 or order online at dominoes.com. Domino's is open 1030 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 1030 to midnight Friday and Saturday. Domino's on East Main in Magnolia. Thank you for shopping all local businesses. Your husband is pretty handy to have around. He makes the world's best mac and cheese. He's in the Tickle Monster Hall of Fame. <laughs> and he can teach anyone how to throw strikes. But a busted pipe in a basement full of water? Honey, I think we need a plumber. Is a little out of his league. That's where a homeowner's policy from Shelter Insurance comes in handy. We'll help get your house back in order and your husband back to what he does best. <laughs> Ask shelter agent Gary Don Farah about Shelter's home insurance options. 
Locally owned and operated, Wilson Bearden Pharmacy now offers medical synchronization so that you can pick up your meds on the same day each month. They also offer free delivery in city limits. Vaccines for shingles, pneumonia, and COVID-19 are also available. Need a gift? Check out Wilson Bearden's variety of knives, flags, girly girl tees, and purses. Stop by and see Ivy Moore and her team at Wilson Bearden Pharmacy, 134 North Washington, serving Magnolia since 1945. Magnolia Regional Medical Center is excited about the addition of orthopedic surgeon Dr. James Kevin Rudder. Dr. Rudder grew up in South Arkansas and has been practicing for the last 20 years in Hot Springs. Dr. Rudder provides full orthopedic services with specialization in joint replacements. Also sports medicine and sports injury and orthopedic trauma including breaks and fractures. Referrals or appointments are accepted. Call the Magnolia Surgical Clinic at 870-235-3200. Welcome back on our Farmers Bank of Trust pregame show. From online and mobile banking to convenient hours and locations, Farmers Bank and Trust is easy banking for busy living. Find a Farmers Bank and Trust location near you at myfarmers.bank. It's the Vikings of Augustana University and the Mule Riders of Southern Arkansas University here this afternoon at Walker Stadium at Goodhart Field. And Augustana is the home team today. We're playing on Southern Arkansas's home field, but uh, SAU was the home team last night. In this first game today, Augustana is the home team. If it goes to a third game, my understanding, Southern Arkansas would be the home team in that. Tanner Brown on the mound again for the Vikings. They are 45 and 11 on the season. His record, 9 and 1, 2.46 ERA. This will be his 14th start, his 15th appearance on the year. Has four complete games. He's pitched 80 and a third innings, given up 65 hits, 31 runs, 22 of those earned. He's walked 22, struck out 110, and opponents batting 220 against Tanner Brown. Your riders will counter with Wyatt Marr. We'll give you his numbers again as he comes out uh, to begin the bottom half of the first inning. Chris Sutton's going to lead it off for Southern Arkansas. Sutton batting 314 with six home runs, 40 runs batted in. He's the Mule Riders' second baseman. That's from the right side. He'll be followed by the catcher, Brett McGee. Third baseman, Brandon Nickel. Jacob Machuca, the first baseman, hits cleanup. Ty Manning, center fielder, bats fifth. Tucker Burton, the DH, hits sixth. First pitch in there for strike one. Chris Lyles, the left fielder, hits seventh. Connor Allen, the right fielder, hits eighth. And Riley Orr, the shortstop, will bat ninth for SAU. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Brown. Took a breaking pitch, strike two. Yeah, back-to-back off-speed pitches to start this game from the left-handed throwing Tanner Brown. Sutton step back, now back in the box. And Brown's pitch. He swings and fouls it back to the backstop. Count stays 0-2 on Sutton. Another good crowd had an announced attendance of 891 last night, and their Mule Rider fans still filing in they here at Good Hartfield. In, in the box, I, and I, th- I think we had more than that. I, I think I we always underestimated. Yeah. We had... Quite a few more than that. Quite a, as a matter of fact, ground ball to the left of the shortstop. Comes in. Hines throws out Chris Sutton. There's one away here in the top half of the first inning. That'll bring Brett McGee, the meal rider catcher, to the plate. 302 hitter with 14 homers and 70 runs batted in. Bats from the left side and the shift as the shortstop moves to the first base side of second base. Three guys over there. And the third baseman moves in to the edge of the grass on the left side. Pretty much equal distance between third and second base. The pitch to McGee. He took a fastball for a strike. Got some pretty good pop on that fastball, too. He did. We saw McGee taking BP earlier, and he was actively working on going the other way. Let's see if he tries that approach here with the lefty-on-lefty matchup. No balls, one strike. Brown's pitch. McGee took a curveball that time in for a strike. So Brown's coming out there throwing strikes. He saw what uh, his teammate did last night, walking some folks, and looks like he's determined not to let that be the case. 
0-2 count. Heat Brown's ready as soon as McGee is set. Now here comes the pitch. 0-2 delivery. That's hit out towards center field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. Just off the end of the bat, but it carried up over the infield, but not high enough for the center fielder Howell to come in and catch up with it. Yeah, just hit it in a really good spot. Like you said, off the end of the bat as McGee went ahead and chased that one outside since it was near the corner with two strikes. Good job of hitting and a nice one-out hit for the Mule Riders. So Brandon Nickel to the plate, hitting 332 with 14 home runs and 80 runs batted in. McGee, by the way, who just batted, he walked three times last night as the single season record for SAU with 60 walks on the season. Also the career record. Yeah, and he's got the conference record and all of that too. He's walked a lot. Here comes the pitch to Nickel down low. And Catcher blocked it, kept it out in front of him, kept McGee at first base. Yeah, McGee actually replaced John Orr, Riley's dad, who had the uh, the career mark as far as walks in an SAU career. I think he's about three shy of the hit-by-pitch record for a season. Brandon showed another catcher, holds that record. Here's the pitch. Nickel looked at a curveball in there for a strike. It's 1-1 one one to Nickel. Jacob Machuca, the first baseman on deck. Machuca changing out bats over there. He says, give me that one that's got the home runs in it. <laughs> that's right. That one looks a little hotter. One ball, one strike to Nickel. And the pitch, a fastball outside. Two balls and a strike. Or, yeah, two and one. Yeah, I wish I had a radar gun on this guy. He's, he's got a pretty good pop with that fastball. Yeah, he does. And pretty good location with the curveball as well. You can see why he came in sporting that two point, whatever it was, 2.24, I think, ERA. 2 1 pitch, though, to throw first over to, over to first base. <laughs> McGee goes back. <laughs> Something about McGee over there at first base. Uh, we talked to Pumphrey. We counted 12 throws over to first base during that encounter in game one last night. McGee does have a huge lead. Pitch in the dirt. There goes McGee. The throw down bounces in. He is in there. Just got the hand in ahead of the tag to throw a little bit on the third base side. Catcher did a good job. Dirksen didn't get away far, and he got it down there in a hurry. But McGee, that big lead uh, is probably what got him to second base. Yeah, you're exactly right. Bang, bang, play at second. And good job by McGee to avoid the tag with the front hand. He kind of reached with his backhand towards the back edge of the bag, and he's able to work into scoring position. A three-ball, one-strike count to Brandon Nickel. Brown's pitch, breaking pitch inside, ball four. I might have jinxed him when I said he's... Uh, Going to make sure he didn't walk anybody here, here this afternoon. Hey, I'll jinx you, at, jinx you at every opportunity that I can. Jinx away. Jacob Machuca now to the plate for SAU. Batting 333, 11 home runs and 43 runs batted in. For you Augustana fans watching on the live stream or listening in on the online. We're the, uh, the home crew here, the radio crew here at Southern Arkansas University. So... You might hear a homerism or two. First and second with one out. Throw to second base and very close back there as McGee slides back in. Boy, that was close. Shortstop came in playing behind and he tagged Brett McGee on the backside. If he'd have been able, if the throw had been closer to the bag where he could have swiped the shoulder, McGee was going to get picked off. Fortunate there for SAU. <laughs> he gets right back out there. The pitch comes. He goes the other way. That's a line drive. Base hit into left field. McGee rounding third. Coming to the plate. Here comes the throw. It is uh, cut off by the third baseman, Barth. And the New Riders take the early lead on a double, or excuse me, a single from Jacob Machuca. Good job by Machuca, the lefty on lefty matchup. And he slices that ball the other way into left field. And again, good hustle by McGee. And probably that large lead at second base allows him to come around and score on the, on the RBI single. Coach Pettigrew at third base was waving him all the yes. way. And the left fielder, Erky, made a good throw in, but uh, it looked like it was going to be a little offline. It was going to have to be relayed, but McGee was already there, so Barth hung on to it. So a run, a run in, one nothing SAU. Runners at first and second with one out. Ty Manning at the plate. The pitch from Brown. A swing and a foul at the plate. 
I think he fouled it. I think so. Manning's still looking for his first hit. He was 0 for 4 last night. He's too good of a hitter to be kept down for too long. See? 335 on the year with eight homers and 48 runs batted in. So you're telling me he's due. He's due. 0 1 to Manning. Brown has his sign. Checks back at second base. Now to the plate. And that's hit hard. He pulled it foul and out of play. He, got, he hit that one right on the nose. Just out in front. So a two strike count on Ty Manning. Tucker Burton, the DH. Yep. Seems like that. Uh, Manning last night, he, he flew out three times. I'm thinking that one, maybe both of those. He hit the ball balls hard. to center. We're hitting pretty, yeah. pretty deep. No balls, two strikes to Ty Manning. Tanner Brown on the mound. Here's his pitch. And it's a little bit up and away. One ball, two strikes. Later on, we'll have our mid-game summary service to Magnolia Regional Medical Center. At the Magnolia Murphy Clinic, you always feel like family. They treat adults ages 18 and over and specialize in wellness checks and illness recovery. Call for an appointment at 234-7101. Brown is set. His 1-2 pitch. That's hit in the air. Popped up to the right side. Going out. Second baseman Mix just barely on the outfield grass. Hauls it in. So Manning off the end of the bat pops up to Mix. There are two away. That'll bring Tucker Burton to the plate, the Mule Rider designated hitter. He comes up with two on and two out here in the top half of the first inning. Another lefty versus lefty matchup. Mule Riders with McGee, Machuca, Burton, all big left-handed hitters in this lineup. Brown looks in for his sign. Takes a peek back at second base. Long look. Now the pitch. Burton pops it up out into shallow left field. Shortstop going out. Can't see it. Left fielder, though. Plenty of time to come in and get under it and make the catch. The shallow fly out to left. And that takes care of SAU in the top half of the first inning. They score one run on two hits, no errors, two men left on base. After a half inning, it's SAU 1 and Augustana coming to bat. This is Muir Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. Hey, you. Yeah, you. It's time to step up to the plate at the Corner Clubhouse on the Magnolia Square. Remember, it's a short stop away to experience delicious pulled pork smoked in-house, baked potatoes, burgers, a full bar, and the best ribeyes cut in-house over an open flame. The Corner Clubhouse is open Monday through Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Don't strike out. Satisfy your cravings with a grand slam at the Corner Clubhouse, 100 South Washington in Magnolia. Hiring someone you trust can be the hardest part of owning a business. At Bo Moses Trucking, trust has been at the top of our list. When you need to get precious cargo from one place to another without worrying about damage, delays, or lost freight, Bo Moses Trucking is the one to count on. Based in Magnolia, Arkansas, since 1999, we have the resources and equipment to take care of all your flatbed freight hauling. Visit us on Facebook or call 870-234-2803. Bo Moses Trucking. Trust us to go the distance. I'm Faith Armstrong. If you worry about your safety or your loved ones, Columbia County Ambulance Service would like you to know about CareLink. CareLink provides an instant link to emergency response every minute, every day. The standard version provides protection surrounding the home, and a mobile unit offers protection anywhere. The area covered includes Columbia, Hempstead, Nevada, Washita, Lafayette Counties, and Claiborne Parish. Call Columbia County Ambulance today to schedule your installation. In the bottom of the first inning, Max Bosser will lead it off for Augustana. He's their first baseman. Bats lead off. Center fielder Carter Howell bats second. Third baseman Jordan Barth hits third. The cleanup hitter, the D.H. Will Olson. Then the shortstop, Jack Hines. Second baseman, J.T. Mix. The right fielder, Jackson Rosencrantz. Hitting eighth, Dre Dirksen, the catcher. 
And hitting ninth is the left fielder, Ben Erke. Monster bats the left side. And Monster playing first. He played left field last night. He again bats from the left side. Monster hitting 318. Has one home run, 15 runs batted in. Three for five yesterday. First pitch to him from Wyatt Marr. A little bit low and outside for ball one. Marr, a 9-1 record, 4.31 ERA. This is his 15th start, 16th appearance. Has one complete game. He's pitched 79 in the third innings, given up 44 runs, 38 earned. He's walked 38, struck out 55. There's a foul off to the left side out of play. And opponents batting 267 against Wyatt Marr. Yeah, we've seen Wyatt Moore this season when he's when he's got his control going and not giving the free passes. He is a tough customer on the mound. He is ready on the mound. Here's his pitch to Mosser. Pulled to the right side. Foul past his first base coach who says, I think I'll just let that one go on by. Don't now, blame him. Coach Pettigrew, on the other hand, would have taken that as a challenge. We saw him bear, bear in a couple last night. That, that depends. Uh, Some of those, if it's a little, if it's a little <laughs> Sunday hopper, hit yeah. not too hard, he might. Hand me, your, hand me your roster there, please. Which one? That one. Pitch outside for a ball. I was looking to see. They don't have the... I thought maybe on that one they may have the numbers on the coaches. They don't. I was looking to see who's coaching first and third. 2-2 two -two pitch. Foul back. Mosser, Howell, and Barth do up here in the first inning for the Vikings. 8-7 to seven last night. SAU a winner. Coming back late. It was tied going into the uh, bottom of the eighth inning, and I say you scored two there on a two-run uh, two-run home run by uh, Connor Allen, put SAU on top. And that pitch is low, three and two, and then uh, Augustana got one in the top of the ninth, but that's all they could muster, and SAU had the one-run victory. Full count to Mosser. Mars said, here's his pitch. That's hit in the air to the left side. Left fielder Lyles moves over toward the line and hauls it in. Out number one here in the bottom half of the first inning. Yeah, not much wind this afternoon. We've seen some crosswind before the game, but right now the flag pretty stagnant out in center field. Last night when the game started, it was blowing left to right, right? And then yeah. and today when they're out here taking BP, the wind was blowing right to left. But now, like you said, there's not much. The flag's not doing much moving out there. Takes a pretty good breeze, though, to make that flag stand out. That's a big flag. It is. That's center field. Carter Howell at the plate. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. He's the leading hitter on this Viking team. Back 397 with 15 home runs and 70 driven in. Somebody's having fun down there. A lot of people having fun, I think. one nothing SAU leads. Mars pitch to Howell. That's hit hard, but one hop over to the third baseman. Nickel sets and throws and gets him over at first base. Yeah, he kind of held on to that one a little long, and that was pretty pretty close at first base. Well, Nichols got a uh, pretty good arm over there, so he did not feel hurried as he gathered it up, and that well, one was hit on a string. The foot that touched the bag was in the air as that as <laughs> yeah. they came into the into the first baseman Machuca's mid over there. So you want a little more urgency next time? Is that what I'm hearing? Wouldn't, wouldn't bother me a bit. Well, I, I guess as long as you beat the, long as you beat hey, the runner. Just get the out. So, first two men retired in the bottom of the first. Jordan Barth to the plate. First pitch popped up on the infield. Sutton, the Mule Rider second baseman, shielding his eyes from the sun now, makes the catch. Three up, three down in the bottom half of the first inning for Augustana. After one, one nothing SAU. This is Mule Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country 99.1. Since 1906, Farmers Bank and Trust has served customers throughout South Arkansas. This year, we've added nine new communities in Arkansas and Oklahoma. We're committed to serving and investing in our new, 
and legacy communities. In Magnolia, we're not the new bank in town, but you've always made us feel at home. When you need a bank perfect for your season of life, come home to Farmers Bank and Trust. Visit myfarmers.bank to learn more. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Sweet Onion Steak Teriyaki is now available at Subway on East Main and Magnolia. Steak, cheese, onions, peppers, and Sweet Onion Teriyaki, and you can customize it as you like. Let me tell you about some other Subway heroes. Baja Steak and Jack, Honey Mustard, Rotisserie Style Chicken, Baja Chicken and Bacon, and Turkey Cali Fresh. Subway still has all your other favorites, too. Use the app like I do and earn rewards at Subway in University Plaza Shopping Center on East Main and Magnolia. Take off winter with the all-new spring arrangements at Bridges on the Square. Located on the Magnolia Square, Bridges has arrangements like the watercolor blooms bouquet and the wonderful whimsy bouquet. Centerpieces are also available. Bridges helps with any occasion, anytime. Follow Bridges on the Square on Facebook and Instagram or visit BridgesOnTheSquare.com. Remember, you bring in the spring with Bridges on the Square, your Magnolia flower shop. Bottom three in the order due up here in the top of the second inning for SAU. Mule rider left fielder Chris Lyles leads it off. Then the right fielder Connor Allen and the shortstop Riley Orr. First pitch swing and a miss by Lyles for strike one. Lyles hitting 363 with eight home runs and 36 runs batted in. Lyles. He bats from the right side. Another guy that's due to get hot again. He was 0 for 4 last night. He was scorching the ball in the conference tournament. A one delivery, check to swing, took it low. Did he call that a swing? I don't think so. Well, the umpire, the right umpire at first raised his right hand like, like he was signaling that, but I don't think they appealed to I, him. I didn't see a formal appeal either. He I might have just been stretching his arm over there. So one ball, one strike count. Pitch to Lyles inside that hit him. Yep, got him on the elbow. Looked like got his got his elbow armor. So Lyles will trot down to first base. Lead off man aboard for SAU here in the top of the second inning. Boy, one of the heroes from last night coming to the plate. Connor Allen, who homered in the bottom of the eighth inning to put SAU on top. That'll put him in double digits with 10 home runs on the season. 33 runs batted in. He's batting 298. Tanner Brown checks the runner at first. Now the pitch, a fastball high for ball one. We're a long way from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where Augustana University is, so not a whole lot of Augustana fans here. I'm sure we got some, some parents here. A 1-0 pitch is low for ball two. Yeah, we heard some smattering last night with the... Uh Augustana had three home runs, so the SAU fans got quiet, and we heard some some cheering for Augie over there. But again, yeah, you're right. That's a long road trip. Their colors are gold and navy blue. SAU's colors are gold and royal blue. The pitch way high and outside. Three balls, no strikes to Connor Allen. Uh, today, if you're listening on the radio and not watching the live stream, Augustana is wearing the gold tops with the navy numbers. SAU wearing all white uniforms. Augie wearing white pants, but the gold tops and the dark caps, gray caps. Here's the pitch. Allen took a fastball, three and one the count. It looked like he had the green light, like he may, may take a hack. I think after the launch pad he had yesterday. If he had a fastball groove to him, he could have taken advantage. So it's three and one to Connor Allen. Lyles on it first, nobody out. Brown's pitch, swing and a miss. He got a high fastball there and took a cut. I just swung over the top of it. Count full now, three and two to Connor Allen. Shortstop Riley Orr on deck for SAU. All of a sudden, the wind now is gusting out towards left field, kind of across. Like I said, that's a big, big, big flag out there on that pole in center field. 
A 3-2 pitch. Allen pops it up out toward right field. Rosencrantz, the right fielder, is under it, and he makes the catch for out number one. I would have lost that bet. <laughs> you just got the hot dog and nothing else. That's it. Yeah. And brought me my change, which I did not think would well, happen. That hot dog will be. I doubt he eats that whole hot dog because they got big hot dogs. <laughs> and plus, he's got to save room for candy. He'll be sure. back. He'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> Stepping in, Riley Orr for the Mule Riders. The Mule Riders leading hitter, batting 381. Seven dingers, 52 ribbies. Throw to first, and diving back in there is Lyles. The lefty on the mound. Pretty good move over there to first base. Yeah, that wind, wind has picked up a little yes. bit. It has. You can count the stars and count the stripes out there in center field. First pitch to Orr. He looked at a strike. Good curveball there. Just fell in on the outside corner. It's going to be a tough pitch if he can locate that. one nothing SAU. We're in the top of the second inning. Throw to first. Had him leaning a little bit towards second, but Lyle still manages to dive back in. Definitely a plus move on the mound. With Tanner Brown. Or, or, or Lyles, rather, act, kind of act like he might be taking yeah. off there. Gets a big lead. A no ball, one strike. Count the pitch to Orr. It's high for ball one. One ball, one strike to Riley. Didn't miss by much. Catcher Dirksen tried to frame it. My app says wins out of the north at zero. <laughs> well, that's a lie. <laughs> it, is a, <laughs> it is a flat out lie. <laughs> Because that, first of all, it's kind of out of the east. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Say east, southeast. That one gets through the catcher to the backstop, and Lyles down to second base. That may be a pass ball. Maybe. Sure. It wasn't It wasn't really left or right. Just went under the mid of Dirksen. I, I couldn't tell whether it bounced. It was right in front of him, so I really couldn't tell if it hit the dirt or not. Usually if it hits the dirt, they'll, they'll charge wild pitch. Yeah, they're going with pass ball. So runner at second with one out. Or at the plate, a two ball, one strike count. And Brown's pitch, that's hit in the air out to right field. Not deep enough to get the runner to third. Right fielder Rosencrantz makes the catch and fires in to second base. Two away. Rosencrantz getting some work out in right field this inning. Chris Sutton, the near rider leadoff hitter, comes in. Duck on the pond out there. Mule Riders would love to bring him around. Absolutely. Mule Riders left two aboard in the top of the first. Hey, you don't want to make that a habit. Sutton steps into the box. Rounded out to short his first time. And the first pitch to him from Brown. Hit hard, but right on two hops. To the shortstop. Hines throws high, but first baseman Mosser came down on the bag. And that retires Sutton over at first. And the Mule Riders in the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on. We go to the bottom of the second. one nothing SAU. This is Mule Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country 99.1. Hey friends, this is Lucas Cheatham. This time of year, everyone seems to be catching spring fever. Well, if you need a little more spring in your step, then Health Quest Therapy is here for you. My mom, Christy, and her team at Health Quest Therapy provide physical, occupational, and speech therapy and will have you ready for those spring activities. Visit healthquesttherapy.net or call today at 870-234-2255. Health Quest Therapy, 1515 East Main and Magnolia. Offenhauser and Company Insurance has been an integral part of South Arkansas for over 138 years by providing quality insurance coverage including home, auto, business, health, and specialty insurance from the finest carriers with an in-house claims department and the very best of service. Offenhauser is proud to help sponsor SAU Mule Rider Sports. Offenhauser and Company Insurance. Offices in Texarkana, Atlanta, Mount Pleasant, San Antonio, and Austin, Texas. Your insurance leader since 1882. 
Stay healthy in 2022 with Doctors Chambliss and Davis. They see patients of all ages from newborn to elderly. They also do primary care, weight loss management, DOT physicals, cool sculpting, BioT hormone physicals, and more. They're open Monday through Thursdays from 8 till 4 and Fridays 8 till noon. The office of Chambliss and Davis is now accepting new patient applications with most insurances accepted, including United Healthcare. Follow Doctors Chambliss and Davis on Facebook for details. Doctors Chambliss and Davis, 1701 East North Street in Magnolia. Will Olson leads it off for Augustana in the bottom of the second inning. The DH. First pitch to him from Marr is a little bit low for ball one. Olson batting 383. That's 15 home runs, 61 RBIs. He is their cleanup hitter. They follow by Jack Hines and JT Mix. Marr's pitch outside ball two. They had a big home run last night. Almost straight away center, a little bit towards the right field side of the 395 sun. Two balls, no strikes to Will Olson. Here's the pitch. That's popped up high in the air out to shallow center field. Manning couldn't see it at first, but now pointed out to him by Sutton. Sutton did a good job pointing where the baseball was. Then Manning picked it up and had to had to hurry in, but he got under it and made the catch. Yeah, good job by Sutton. And then again, excellent speed by Manning allows him to race in and make the catch. So there's one away. Yeah, that sun very high in the sky. Very short shadows out here right now. Manning just, well, there is not a cloud in the sky either. That pitch misses for ball one to Jack Hines. Jack batting 366 with 10 long balls and 37 runs driven in. 1-1 one, one pitch is popped up on the right side. It was a 1-0 oh pitch. Sutton moves over. He's got it up and, and makes the catch. And he had a little help there from Machuca, too, is kind of pointing it out. It's a high sky right now and very difficult to pick up those high, high pop-ups. Yeah, they both had sunglasses on and gloves up trying to shield the sun. So it's definitely a battle with, with the fly balls. Brings JT Mix to the plate. Mix batting 309, two home runs, 35 RBIs on the season. Second baseman hits from the right side. Mars pitch is in the dirt. Ball one. Mars been behind every one of these hitters, but so far he's come back to get the first two. Mar ready for another one. Here it comes. That's hit hard up the middle. Line drive, base hit. And I jinxed him, didn't I? You did. Just right back up the middle. So a two-out single for Mix. Jackson Rosencrantz comes to the plate for the uh, Vikings. 285 hitter, eight homers, 36 RBIs. He wouldn't to call him the Augies. Don't they call some them people, well, Some people yeah. do, yeah, but I guess true nickname is the Vikings, the Augustana Vikings. Here's the pitch, and he lays down a bunt, but it goes foul. To push it up the first baseline. I think a lot of people just call them Augie. Yeah, because I'm looking at their, for Augustana, their yeah. sports page is Go Augie, so I'm assuming it's uh, we have some other nicknames for some of our schools within the conference that... Uh, those host schools do not appreciate, but I assume the Go Augie is one that's acceptable for Augustana. Yeah, I'm sure a lot, a lot of folks. Augustana is too many syllables, so a lot of folks just call them. Well, kind of like the Mule Riders and the Riders. Yeah. No balls, one strike. The pitch to Rosencrantz. Uh, strike call. Looked a little up and away, maybe, but we'll take it. So an 0-2 count to, to Rosencrantz. He kind of took a little what? <laughs> you sure? Look, look back at the home plate umpire. He stepped out, now back in. Dirksen on deck. 0-2, a first to throw to first. Mix was not very far off. He's back on, and Moore's got the ball back. 
Let's just not do that 12 times. It's still one of the oddest sequ sequences in a baseball game I've seen with the dozen throws over to the mule rider catcher on first base last night. Here's the 0-2 outside. One ball, two strikes. I've seen it in the majors, but, you know, Twelve? with, with well, with legitimate, with legitimate stolen base guys that you knew were going to run. But, yeah, they, they did it with, with McGee on, and McGee wasn't likely to take off. I'm going to go find McGee after the game and tell him, according to the SAU Hall of Famer, he is not a legitimate base-stealing threat. Well, I'm talking about, I'm talking no, about, like, no. the record-setting yeah. guys. Yeah. So like, You're Ricky Hendersons. Yeah. yeah. The guys that made a career out of, you know, getting on and swiping bases. One ball, two strikes to, to Rosengrantz. Ooh, he was, he was leaning yeah, to second, and right. the throw came over and just does get back in at first base. Gold's the record for St. Louis. Would it be Vince Coleman? Yeah, we'll have to, that'll be a Google project for at some point this afternoon. I don't think he ever will. I don't know. Pitch comes. That's lifted high in the air. That's going to be tough with the sun, but Manning Manning handles it with relative ease out there. A little off center toward the left side, and down goes Augustana in the bottom of the second inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. Through two innings of play, it's one to nothing SAU. This is Mill Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country 99.1. Become one of the many satisfied patients who use Prince Pharmacy in Magnolia. Refilling your prescriptions is easy with Prince Pharmacy's new mobile app. You can also refill or transfer prescriptions on their new website, PrincePharmacyRx.com. Prince Pharmacy still has their 24-hour refill line, too. Call 234-7292 anytime. Prince Pharmacy also has a convenient drive through and free delivery in the Magnolia city limits. See how they make a difference at Prince Pharmacy in the Southern Medical Group Clinic at 2 Lebanese Stadium in Magnolia. Buy one, get one for a dollar at McDonald's. Or as we like to call it, the can't have just one deal. Mix and match a flaky sausage biscuit, savory sausage McMuffin, sausage McGriddles, or crispy hash browns. Want two sausage biscuits? Buy one, get one for a dollar. Want a sausage biscuit and hash browns? That's cool too. Choose more of what you love. Buy one, get one for a dollar at McDonald's. Prices and participation may vary. Valid for item of equal or lesser value. It cannot be combined with combo meal. The Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place are located in the heart of Magnolia, Arkansas. Wentworth offers award-winning services. Their cottages are homes large enough to comfortably accommodate 12 elders with private rooms and complete baths surrounding a shared living room, open kitchen, dining area, and spa. They recognize the importance of performing our jobs with compassion and providing comfort physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Celebrate National Nurse Home Week with the Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place. Visit cottagesofwentworthplace.com. Top of the third inning, SAU with a 1-0 lead over Augustana here in Game 2 of this best two out of three Super Regional Series. Brett McGee to the plate for the Mule Riders. First pitch low and away for ball one. It'll be the two, three, and four hitters due up for SAU. Brett McGee, Brandon Nickel, and Jacob Machuca. Here in game two, the Mule Riders are the visiting team, so that's why they're hitting here in the top of the third. Brown peers into his catcher. Throws that one, hit pretty well out towards right field. Right fielder going back, looks up, it's gone. Home run, Brent McGee to lead off the top of the third inning. Just over the right field wall, a solo shot, and that is his 15th home run of the season and 71st run batted in as the Mule Riders take a 2-0 lead over the Vikings. That one never did get very high. That was a blind shot over the right field wall. Just, it didn't get over the field, over the fence by much, but uh, yeah, it actually went, enough. went over the yellow line there. And there's some signage behind that. It shows the Mule Riders Conference Championships and regional appearances and actually hit off that blue sign just above the home run marker. But you're right, that was a line drive out of here, so 
First man up for the Mule Riders here. A solo home run that brings Brandon Nickel to the plate. He squares to Bunt, pushes it down towards first. Bunted pretty hard, and he beats the throw. The first baseman had to charge in. He flipped to the pitcher, Brown, and Nickel able to beat him by half a step over to the bag, and there's a Bunt single for Brandon Nickel. And I kind of like that and kind of don't. <laughs> you like to see Nickel <laughs> swing the bat. got such power. Uh, but, but still, you, you got to keep him guessing. Well, you do. And I think he bunted that one a little harder than he meant to. But, again, it got the job done. Good idea there dropping down the bunt. And he's now aboard for the Mule Rider cleanup man, Jacob Machuca, who singled and drove in a run back in the first inning. Lefty on lefty matchup. Brown comes set at the letters. A couple looks over to first base. Comes home, off-speed pitch, a called strike one. That's something you don't expect. That's probably the first time. Yeah, Nickel is uh, probably again. It may probably not the first time he's bunted this year, but I sure, I, I, it surprised the heck out of me. <laughs> I think it did. Augustana as well. Machuca squares around, takes it back, and takes that ball inside as that one almost hit his back foot. So Machuca was looking to bunt. They had the shift on. I think he was going to try to drop one down down the third base side. Got the third baseman shifted way over towards the second base bag. Shortstop playing almost directly behind second base. One and one the count. Safe lead at first base for Allen. Or excuse me, Nickel. Next pitch up and out of the zone. Two balls, one strike. Brandon Nickel on the season, just in case your riders decide to put something in motion here. Six out of seven in the stolen base department. Again, pretty safe lead so far for Nickel. The 2-1 pitch from Brown. Curveball, that one popped up towards left field. It's going to be playable. Left fielder has plenty of room, and Erky makes the catch to record the first out of the inning. I got to look in here. Brandon Nickel didn't even have a sacrifice bunt this year. So now, I don't know if he had another bunt, bunt oh, single or not. It doesn't keep a stat on that, but uh, he did not have any sacrifice bunts this year. Uh, he now has a bunt single. So add that to his uh, stats for the season. He's still at first base. He's not able to tag up on the fly ball. Tom Manning, the Mule Rider center fielder to the plate. Popped up to second base in his first plate appearance. Curve ball. Manning started to offer and held up. Takes that one low for ball one. Manning on the season, a 333 average. Eight home runs, 48 runs batted in. He is the leading base stealer for the Mule Riders. Brown, the pitcher, takes a look over at first. Comes home that one inside, and that may have hit Manning. It did not. Yes, it, uh, he says it did. I, I thought it hit his elbow. They're bringing the bringing the uh, umpires in. That was a curveball in. I thought it hit off his elbow pad, and and Tom Manning certainly thought it did as well. Home plate umpire didn't see it, so we're going to have a conference. Yeah, they're going to he the umpire went out. Yep, they're going to give him first yes. base. So it is a hit by pitch. Hit by pitch, and all of a sudden you got Brandon. Nickel will go over to second. Ty Manning at first, and we're going to have Augustana. Their coach is going to come out and have a conference with the umpire about the hit by pitch. Also going to have some movement going down towards the Viking bullpen. Manning's another one of those mirror riders that gets hit by a pitch a lot. That's his 23rd time. McGee's been hit 26 times, Sutton 24. Yeah, he doesn't mind taking, taking one. Mill Rider designated hitter Tucker Burton to the plate. Burton, 19 home runs this season. Brown comes set. Looks over his shoulder at second base and Brandon Nickel. Pitch that one lifted out towards center field, fairly deep. Left fielder and center fielder coming together. Left fielder Erky makes the catch. Nickel tags from second, advances over to third. Mule Riders have runners at the corners. Now two out here in the top of the third. Got that ball in the air, but the wind died. 
Yeah. Earlier, we had wind blowing across from right to left, but just as he hit it, it's kind of on again, off again. It's like somebody's somebody's playing with a switch. Somebody just just teasing us because we've had wind blowing across from right to left, and with a little bit, wouldn't have taken much. A little push from the wind might have might have got that one out, or at least off the wall. Well, I'm gonna tell you what. I got a nomination for father, and I'm assuming husband of the year over here. He's got, it looks like his wife and daughter, and he's got the handheld fan and is standing behind them, alternating the fan on each one of them over here. That guy's, uh, I don't see him. Oh, you don't see this? Like I said, he's my nominee for Citizen of the Week at least. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> he's got that battery powered fan. There's a little kid coming by. He's making sure he gets a fresh breeze. <laughs> He must have really been in the doghouse if he has that. Well, he knows himself. Father's Day is coming up. So he's angling yeah. for the gift? Yeah, a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, it won't be, good call. be Father's Day. Good call. He may have a birthday coming up, too. Who knows? Well, so may get, two for, may get a twofer out of that. Labor-intensive job by that gentleman. Chris Lyles to the plate. Two out men at the corners. First pitch swing and a miss for strike one. Now there's action in the Augustana bullpen. That is Caleb Sorry. Speaking of hit by pitches, there are only two, two Augie players that that have double digit hit by pitches, an eleven and a ten. Eleven for Hines, ten for Howell. The 0-1 pitch, first to throw to first base. Manning dives back in safely. Again, Manning is a huge threat to take off here. He's 26 out of 29 in the stolen base department. By the way, Lou Brock, single-season stolen base leader in Cardinals history at 118. I couldn't remember if Coleman, Coleman was at 110 yeah. for his season. Uh-oh, they've got Manning in a rundown. Let's see if Nickel tries to advance from home. He does. They're going to throw home the plate. The plate, he is safe. Nickel dives around the tag of the catcher, Darkson, and Augustana not happy with that call. I think Nickel did get around the tag. I thought he did, too. As he swipes the back end of the plate as Manning intentionally gets it a rundown between first and second. With all the chaos, Manning does advance over to second. Nickel comes in to score. It is now a 3-0 ball game as SAU has pushed two runs across here in the top of the third inning. So it ends up being a double steal as uh, they turned. They had Manning in the rundown, and then they turned to throw home, so Manning proceeded to second base. So they got the runner in and got Manning to second. Hey, you got that. You have a 1-1 count, and you're right. Manning now in scoring position for SAU. And, boy, with his speed, any hit to the outfield, and your riders are going to tack on another run. See if Chris Lyles can make that happen. Lyles, a 363 average. Brown's pitch called strike two. And actually, that was a throwover, so the count is 0-2. It was not 1-1. Now, no balls, two strikes. Lyle's going to have to be defensive at the plate if he can keep the inning alive. Connor Allen is on deck for the Mule Riders. Long look in by the pitcher, Brown. The pitch, that one up in the eyes of Chris Lyles and taken for ball one. The way this game is going, that could be uh, that could be a really big play in this game. They could. Sorry. Stealing that run. Sorry is ready in the Augustana bullpen if called upon. Defensively, Augustana straight away. Time is called. I think Lyles requested that. Steps out, takes a breath. You think Sorry took any ribbon as a as a child? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. The one two. Off speed pitch, swing and a miss for strike three. But SAU does strike for two more runs off of two hits. There were no errors, one left on base as we head to the bottom of the third inning. SAU leading Augustana three to nothing. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. Whether in a crowded gym, in the bleachers at the ball field, or sitting under the Friday night lights, South Arkansas is all about tradition. Since 1903, our tradition at Botcall Bank has been to create lasting relationships with our customers and community partners. Local traditions, local leadership, and local decisions. At Botcall Bank, we are your local team, and we are committed to you and our community. 
Spot Call Bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Is there one place I can go for all my car, truck, and SUV needs? One place for all kinds of repairs, tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, oil changes, tires, etc., etc.? Well, yes, there is. Spitler Tire and Auto. You've been trusting Spitler Tire and Auto for 15, 16 years now, and they're still working hard for you. Call to set up an appointment to get your ride into one of their 10 service bays, and it'll be back to peak performance in no time. Spitler Tire and Auto in the Dairy Queen Shopping Center, 521 East Main and Magnolia. Well, every game we spotlight a mule rider. Join us later on for our Bot Call Bank Mule Rider Spotlight. A lot of different mule rider athlete each game on our Bot Call Bank Mule Rider Spotlight. Bot Call Bank, local bank, local people serving us in South Arkansas since 1903. Do up for Augustana be the eight, nine, and one hitters. Again, SAU leading by a score of three to nothing, bottom of the third inning. Dre Dirksen, the catcher for Augustana, steps in, leading shift, home, yep. shift to the left side. Yeah. Leading home run hitter with 16 on the season. Morris first pitch popped up over towards first base. It's going to be in foul territory. Does Machuca have a play? Oh, he man. does, he but he overran it. And that ball falls harmlessly foul, and Dirksen goes back to home plate with another shot at it. And no end right now, or not much. Might be, you never know, though. It may be a little bit up there. Yeah, it could be. You're right. The, and that, that was a, that was sky high. So, Manchuka overran it, tried to scamper back. He ran over quite a bit, overran it quite a bit, and then had to come back. And well, I actually thought with the spin, I, I thought it was questionable whether or not it was going to be in play. It ends up being well, you know, well in front of the bricks there. Next pitch low for ball one. So, I don't know. There must be a little wind up. Uh, up in the in the I'm sky. I must say the way there. that the flag is acting out there, because sometimes it's it's blowing, sometimes yeah. it's not, uh, and then, and of course that ball went pretty high, so maybe a little error swirling up there somewhere. Morris pitch way outside. Count goes to two and one. Well, let's hope that doesn't. A lot of times those walks, errors, and extra chances that are given on uh, on foul balls can come back and bite you. Let's hope that doesn't happen here. Morris pitch fouled back. Even as the count, two balls, two strikes. Flag out in center. That flag is so big here at SAU. They have a big, tall flagpole with a big flag on it between the uh, end zone of the football stadium and the uh, and out in center field of the baseball stadium uh, that serves dual purpose there. But it's so big, they can't bring it all the way down to, to full half-mast. The 2-2. Two -two. Good pitch inside corner, freezes the hitter, a called strike three. And Dirksen called out on strikes to begin the bottom of the third. Just frozen. That was inside, inside corner at the knees and did not appear that Dirksen was thinking fastball. To bring up the number nine hitter, Ben Erksy. Erky, Erky I'm sorry. I wrote it down wrong. Erky to the play, squares to Bunn, offers at it, and misses for strike one. We saw Erky come in late in yesterday's game as a pinch runner for the designated hitter, Will Olson. He's a good hitter, though, hitting 364. Yep. Start getting the starts day in left field. This is his 45th at bat of the season. That one chopped towards third, a high chopper. Nickel gloves it, a strong throw across, and is safe. Boy, I thought, I thought the throw got him. Now, Machuca's foot may have come off the bag. He was really having to stretch for that and reach. Either way, that's going to be an infield single for Erky, and it's going to be back to the top of the Augustana lineup. Tough ball there for the third baseman, Nickel, because he was having to back up and never really had time to set, so I don't think he could get quite as much as normal on that throw. I, really, I actually thought the runner beat it, so I thought it was correct call. Yeah, but that's just, and I'm still not sure Machuca's foot held the bag. Again, he was really having to reach back towards the outfield side. Max Mosser to the plate. First pitch catches the outside corner for a strike. Mosser 
from his body language did not uh, does not appear he agreed with that call. Mosser flew out to left field back in the first inning. Safe lead at first base by Erkey. Moore going to throw over anyway and runners back easily. I would say the crowd not quite as big as, well, I don't know. It's uh, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good crowd. I would say not quite as many as last night, but certainly comparable. The 0 1. Fastball in the dirt. Good job by Brett McGee to block that one. Runner Erkey has to stay put at first base. Moore takes a look into the dugout and coaches flash their signals both for the pitch sequence and the defensive alignment, which is pretty much straight away with the left handed hitting leadoff man. Another throw over to first base, and again, runner back in standing up. Augustana, the 2018 national champions. Mule Riders one win away from a date with the College World Series in Cary, North Carolina. Augustana is going to need to win two today to get there. The one and one as he squares to bunt, bat it back towards the mound. Mar gloves it, throws across to first base for the sure out. May have had a shot at second, but better there not to roll the dice. It took a high hop there after he bunted it down into the dirt. Almost like the old AstroTurf bounce. That sacrifices Erky over to second base. He's in scoring position. Yet again, he would have had to do a 180 to throw it back to second base. So better, better just to record the out there. There are two out in the inning. Carter Howell, the center fielder to the plate for Augustana. The pitch inside it gets away from McGee, but not far enough for the base runner to advance. He had a little bit of trouble picking up that ball after it bounced off of his chest protector. Had there been one out, he may have taken off from second base, but you don't ever want to. Not the don't ever out. want the third out of third <laughs> <That's> base. <right. laughs> not a good idea. Discretion, the better part of valor in that situation. Hey, you're already in scoring position. 1-0 and the count. Sutton playing directly behind the second base bag. The pitch, that one hit hard out towards left. Lyles goes back, gives a look, and that one's gone. Two-run home run, and that's why you don't want to record the third out of the inning at third base. You do not want to take the bat out of the hands of Carter Howell, who launches his 16th home run of the season. And all of a sudden, we have a 3-2 ball game. And that was pretty much a no-doubt about her off the bat, too. He smacked that one pretty good. Hard shot. Hard did not fool him with that pitch. He did not, and that one was hit out on a line. It was a line drive all the way out. Yeah, Mule Rider is now a one-run lead in the bottom of the third inning, and it's the number three hitter, Jordan Barth. No, no rest for the weary here. Another good hitter swinging a miss as Moore took a little bit off that pitch and gets Barth out in front. Fourth, another guy, 15 home runs, 52 runs batted in, a hefty 373 batting average. Mars 01. That one drilled foul. He got way ahead of that one. It's going out towards the parking lot, and I don't think there'll be an insurance claim on that one. I think it hit in between two cars there. If I was going to be over there in the parking lot over there, I, I would be doing like some of those folks sitting in the back of my pickup truck so I could guard, guard it. Guard against. Yeah, and I'd have a glove or something to, or some way to fend off baseballs flying that direction. The pitch hit hard. Riley Orr jumps and snags it out of the air for out number three. Augustana does strike for two runs off of two hits. There were no errors. There was no one left on base as we head to the fourth inning. SAU leading Augustana by a score of 3-2. to two. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. KVMZFM, Waldo, Magnolia. When you move into retirement, one key transition involves your income. Create a plan. Talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor. Laura Kroll, Steve Hardy, Mark Woods, or Ethan Young. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Big day of closet organizing, toddler yoga, scavenger hunts, jigsaw puzzling, and sledding down the stairs. Get Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box. 
two medium, one topping pizzas, five breadsticks, and your choice of pasta or wings. Sealed for your safety, all in one box. Choose contactless delivery or new curbside pickup at PizzaHut.com. The Big Dinner Box, from our hut to yours. Ask for contactless and curbside. Availability of contactless curbside delivery areas, charges, and minimums vary. Delivery charge not tip. This week's At Your Service featured item is Seafold Paper Towels. These paper towels come in bleached white. Get 200 sheets per pack and 12 packs per carton. Shop local this summer and come by and see the At Your Service team today. At Your Service Environmental Solutions, where they know the power of clean. 1506 North Vine in Magnolia. Or visit atyourservicestore.com. Top of the fourth inning, Mule Riders with a 3-2 lead over the Vikings. Number eight hitter Connor Allen will lead off for SAU. Pitch fastball high for ball one. Brown back to work on the mound for Augustana. There was activity in the bullpen back in the top of the third inning. Next pitch, a called strike. He was count one ball, one strike. There is no activity at the moment. In fact, I don't even see anyone for Augustana on the benches over towards their bullpen down the left field side. 1-1, one, one, curveball, foul Baby, back. That one scared me. <laughs> <laughs> scared me. <laughs> I'm glad you weren't doing the play-by-play. We may have needed the seven-second delay there. I'm, yeah, I'm about to freak out on that one. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. I was expecting it to hit the top of the backstop, but it just came just over the top of it. One, two. That one hit down the right side. It's going to be in foul territory. First baseman gives chase, but cannot catch up to it as it falls harmlessly on the foul side of the line. So Connor Allen's going to get another chance here. Remember the pickup truck yesterday parked in the parking lot over here and they were sitting in there and had a cooler in the back of the pickup yes. truck? Yeah. Well, I saw a picture of Alex and uh, Alex and Tanner. Yeah, they told me they were going to talk yeah. to Alex the other day. There's a swing to miss for strike three. So Connor strikes out. Anyway, they were so so I saw she posted something on Facebook. They had the baby out there and they were watching the game from the back of the pickup truck. And uh, and I saw the cooler on there. I said, oh, that's okay, that's the truck with the cooler. So I told them that we were uh, trying to figure out what was in that cooler over there. <laughs> she, she says it's baby. It was baby food. They're keeping okay, baby of food. Cold. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Pedialyte. <laughs> Might have been something hit underneath of it. I don't know. Riley Orr to the plate. Mule Rider shortstop looks at ball one. Good fastball, but it was outside. Yeah, I went and had my Friday afternoon burger over there. Next pitch. Didn't miss by much. Must have been a little bit low. Count goes to 2-0. and oh. Riley Orr flew out to right. His first time up, 379 average on the season. The 2-0 and from Brown, that one fouled back and out of play. Shannon Harrington said on Facebook that Jeff and Connor both have their phones over in Texarkana. <laughs> Zach's getting married tonight. At the, at the wedding's tonight, not, as long yeah, as the they, wedding's at 6 tonight, yeah. so I think they can get away with it as long as they're not, not checking during the ceremony. Next pitch outside. Count goes to three and one. Yeah, I'm going to say Shannon. We'd have to go to game two for that Shannon, to happen. Yeah, Shannon's going to be taking phones away if that happens. <laughs> I'm going to say, if Augustana wins this game and, and forces the third game, I bet they'd be sneaking a peek at it <laughs> somewhere along, or at least having somebody flashing signs to them from somewhere. 3-1 inside for ball four. So Raleigh Orr reaches... Via a walk, and that is, what is that? Only the second walk. There have been two other hit by pitch, so that's the fourth free pass handed to the Mule Riders, and that gets the Mule Riders back to the leadoff spot, and Chris Sutton, he is grounded out to short in both of his at-bats this afternoon. By the way, speaking of Facebook, while I'm there, former SAU assistant basketball coach Aaron Niven has a, has a birthday today. Happy birthday to Aaron. The pitch to Sutton hit foul down the third base side. 
just as they watched during rehearsal last night. So you are listening, Jeff, or watching. <laughs> Feel free to go ahead and tell us when the when the home run's coming, Jeff. Well, three two game now. We we uh, we could we could use use one or two. Pretty healthy lead at first base for Raleigh Orr. Browns pitch. That one hit hard out to right field and through for a base hit. But Raleigh Orr had to kind of check up and make sure that one got through the infield. So he is only to advance, only able to advance one bag to second. But good job by Chris Sutton. He hit it hard, went with the pitch the other way. And your riders have two men aboard and Brett McGee coming to the plate. Yeah, good job going with the pitch. If, if it hadn't been right at the right fielder, Orr might have had a shot at third base. But uh, it was back in pretty quick. Well, McGee, so far, two for two. Had a solo home run back in the third inning. It was home run number 15 for the Mule Rider catcher. And now gusting pretty good out towards left, kind of across, a little bit out. Brown takes a look at Riley Orr at second base. Comes home, that one fouled back and out of play. I think McGee's a little upset. He thought that was a pretty good pitch to hit. He takes an extended look up in the air. I'm going to tighten the batting gloves and step back in. And again, action in the Augustana bullpen. Caleb Sari staying loose. That's S-A-A-R-I. But we're going with the pronunciation guide. Throw over to second, swipe tag, Riley Orr back in safe. Evidently someone with Augustana got tired of us butchering the names and provided a few more. Uh, yeah, I think they actually sent that, I guess, because oh, okay. we because we said we only had like four names on the pronunciation guide, and I think their SID sent that, like, wasn't f long into the game, but everybody was occupied, so nobody had a chance to check it. Next pitch up in the zone. So appreciate him sending that and with with further, uh, and we apologize to the Ballweg family. And we kind of went with Ballweg because that's what it looked like. And so anyway, Ballweg is the way his name is pronounced, and he's not in the lineup today. Now uh, with this Southern draw, it's kind of six of one, half dozen of another. Anyway, it's not going to come out right. One ball, one strike. Brown set at the letters. Pitch low. Took a little off that one, and it finds the outside corner for a called strike two. A pretty good lead over at second base by Riley or also Chris Sutton at first as he is not being held on. McGee behind in the count. Brandon Nickel on deck for SAU. Top of the fourth, Mule Riders leading by a score of three to two and threatening again. The one-two to McGee. Fastball, that one hit foul down the right field line. First baseman was playing pretty tight towards the line over there, so Mosser, pretty much anything in fair territory, he's going to be able to get to even if it's hit on a line. Shortstop playing on the first base side of second. Only one infielder on the left side of the infield. That's Barth. We'll try the one-two pitch again. Well, pitch, fastball, called strike three on the outside corner, and there are now two out in the inning. And it's going to be up to Brandon Nickel if the Mule Riders are going to try to add to this one-run lead. Tough pitcher. Not much that McGee could have done with that. Just caught that outside corner. Lefty against lefty, so it's breaking away from him. Just what much he could have done. He was, I think, hoping it was going to go outside. Nickel one for one. He's reached base. Both times up, walked in the first, had a bunt single in the third, and came around to score on the stolen base. Tom Manning able to get into a rundown and allow Nickel to come in and score. Brown a long look over at second base. Comes home, off-speed pitch, fouled back, and 
Oh, he got a pitch to hit there. Yeah, over the press box out of play. That looked like a hanging curveball. It was a hanging curveball. <laughs> he got it. He got yeah. one to hit. We'll try it again. Allen, of, or excuse me, nickel rather. That's what, yeah, Allen, that's what Allen hit out last night was a hanging curve. It went a long way. The 0 1 pitch to nickel. Fastball. Evidently finds the inside corner. There's a called strike two. And Brandon Nickel down in the count. No balls, two strikes. He says, let me time to adjust my gloves and give you a challenge on strike three. 384 average with runners in scoring position. See if he can add to that number here. He's going to have to battle down 0-2. Brown, another long look at second before coming home. That one over the head of Nickel, taken for ball one. Well, later on, got our Magnolia Regional Medical Center mid-game summary coming your way. Magnolia Family Medical Clinic, your full-service health care provider for all members of your family, ages birth through end of life. They accept patients by walk-in or with an appointment. Call for your appointment at 235-3555. Nickel, the leading RBI man for SAU with 80. One, two, hit hard back up the middle and through to center field. Riley Orr is going to make the turn at third. He's going to come around to score, but Sutton is thrown out at third base, trying to go from first to third. The run is going to count as he crosses the plate prior to the out. So add another run as Riley Orr comes around to score. Chris Sutton gunned down at third base by the center fielder. So SAU strikes for one run off of two hits. There were no errors, one left on base. So we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Mule Riders leading the Vikings by a score of 4-2. to two. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. What's better than a helping hand? How about one you can actually shake? At Farm Bureau Insurance, that's exactly what you get. There's a local agent like me in every county, and we're passionate about helping our local communities thrive. For me, it's more than a job. It's a calling. I'm Steven Zorsch. Call me at 234-1966 for an auto, home, or life insurance quote and learn more about how Farm Bureau Insurance can save you time and money. That's Steven Zorsch at 234-1966. Southern Medical Group has expanded its family and is pleased to announce that Dr. Chase Helm has joined their practice. Dr. Helm recently graduated from UAMS and specialized in family practice. Dr. Helm will be seeing patients in all age groups. Southern Medical Group will be accepting new patients. Please call 870-234-5995 to make your appointment. Southern Medical Group, our family taking care of yours. Visit smgarkansas.com. The heart of the order due up for Augustana, the four, five, and six hitters. Will Olsen, the DH, will be the first man up for the Vikings. Bars pitch hit sky high. It's going to be near the right field line. Sutton comes over, makes the catch. Overran actually had to dive backwards and make the catch in fair territory for out number one. Good play there by the Mule Rider second baseman as, again, uh, in the upper reaches of the of where that fly ball was, there must be some right to left breeze. As that's the second time we've seen the SAU infielders trying to snag those, and at the last minute having to scamper back towards the field of play to make the catch. Nonetheless, there is one out, and the designated hitter was retired. Morris first pitch outside for ball one. It's no small feat. Olsen, again, hit a blast last night over the center field wall. Good to see him retreat back to the dugout. Jack Hines to the plate. That one hits a shallow right. That's going to be trouble. Connor Allen racing over. He dives. Cannot get there. It kicks off his glove into foul territory. And 
Jack Hines goes into second base. That should be a double all the way. Connor Allen had a long way to run, made a diving attempt, but just couldn't quite catch up to it. As he retrieves his glasses near the foul line in right field. So Jack Hines now at second base in scoring position for JT Mix, who is one for one on the afternoon. Mix the second baseman, a 313 average. Moore takes a look at the runner at second. Comes home. Off-speed pitch. They appeal down to, to first to see if there was a swing. There was not. It's taken for ball one. Moore checks the wristband. Comes back on to the mound. Hines with the had a pretty sizable lead at second base. Chris Sutton playing near the bag, trying to keep him a little closer. Throw to second, and Hines dives back in safely. Wyatt Moore so far has gone three and a third. Scattered four hits, giving up two runs. Pitch fastball inside. Count goes to two balls, no strikes. The Riders defensively pretty much straight away against Sutton, cheating towards the second base bag, trying to keep the runner close. Moore comes set. That one hit hard out towards left center field and through. That is going to score a run. Manning retrieves it quickly, gets the ball back in, and keeps JT Mix at first base. But there's an RBI single. And again, Augustana makes this a one-run game as they pull it to within a it's now 4-3 game as Hines comes around to score. Again, give JT Mix the single and RBI. There's the fifth hit and third run of the game for Augustana. Your Riders lead by a score four to three, and Rosencrans at the plate for the Vikings. First pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. It's like last night. This thing's just going to keep going back and it's, forth. Yeah, it's got that feel. Two good teams here battling it out. So he wants to win it in one. The 0-1. Hitter squares to bunt, takes it back as that ball's thrown in the dirt. Evis count, one ball, one strike. Got JT Mix at first base, and so far, Augustana hasn't done a lot of running. Mix 10 for 13 in that department. Got a hitter at the plate with the pretty decent average. That one hit foul into the Augustana dugout. Oh, Bowen, not anybody playing baseball down there? I think he's hunting more money for oh, okay. what candy? Is that what you're up here for? You up here for money? <laughs> you can get a drink, bud. <laughs> One ball, two strikes, the count. There's a swing to miss for strike two. Great. Oh, that was strike three. I was behind. See, Bowen got me all distracted there. There's a big second out. Dirksen comes to the plate again. No, can't really take a breath here with Dirksen. I'd say your son was raised in a barn, but he, he came back. He's back. <laughs> Dirksen with 16 home runs on the season. Big right-handed hitter steps in. First pitch, like a slider. Must have missed inside. I think Brett McGee was asking the umpire exactly where that missed. Yeah, I want to say it was uh, lower inside or something. that uh, crowd wanted to know, too. You don't think Tripp was wanting to know, do you? I don't think the home plate umpire was inclined to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-0 from Wyatt Marr. 
Fastball, that one hit high up in the air. Shallow right center field. It looks like Allen's got it under control. He glides underneath it and records the out. Augustana does strike for one run off of two hits. There were no errors and one runner left on base. As we head into the fifth inning, Mule Riders leading the Vikings by a score of four to three. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. Let's be honest, you deserve the best. Jimmy John's in Magnolia makes freaky fast, freaky fresh sandwiches near you using only the freshest ingredients. Stop by and order delivery or pickup from the Magnolia location next to Walmart for a tasty sandwich today. And while you're at it, why don't you choose some chips or a cookie and a drink and make it a combo. Whether you're in store or in a delivery zone, we'll always make you a tasty sandwich. Become a reward member by downloading the Jimmy John's app. Jimmy John's Magnolia, open every day from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Within your investment portfolio, you may have a cash management account. This account can help pay for emergency expenses, short-term goals, or your everyday spending. You can use this account to pay for unexpected expenses or save for a short-term goal. And you can increase your comfort level in your portfolio because the funds in your cash management account are quite stable and less subject to movements in the financial markets. Talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor, Mark Woods, Laura Kroll, Steve Hardy, or Ethan Young. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Welcome back to Southern Arkansas University Walker Stadium at Good Hard Field as Southern Arkansas hanging on to a 4-3 to three advantage over the Vikings of Augustana. The difference right now being that run that the Muir Riders stole. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, Tom Manning kind of forcing the run down between first and second, allowing Nickel to come in and score. Of course, after that, kind of a base running error there. I think Chris Sutton coming around being thrown out, but again, the run did cross to uh, to end the fourth inning as Riley Orr touches home plate just before Chris Sutton was thrown out at third to end the fourth. And then they did, well, they did score one in the fourth inning also, but uh, yeah, that was in the third when that happened. That one was yeah. fouled off to the left side off the bat of Jacob Machuca. Machuca's one for two, RBI single in the first, and flew out to left in the third. So, yeah, there's the Throwing out all the stops, obviously, because a, a, a loss for Augustana and the season's over. And the Mule Riders wanting to go ahead and get that second win first thing. Because if they, you know, if Augustana gets the win, then a lot of time that, that momentum can carry you into uh, winning two. Yeah, you're exactly right. One ball, one strike to Machuca. Here's the pitch. He took a cut, fouled it off left side. Good to see Machuca going the other way with the left-handed pitchers. Again, he had the first RBI of the game. Uh, yeah, went up the field. Yeah, going with the pitch and just laced one into left field, and that time it was a foul ball. But again, he was looking to go the other way with the pitch. Here's the one, two, and Machuca pulls that one. And ooh, look out, kids! That one hopped over, just skimmed across the top of the dugout, a one hopper, and down underneath the uh, the canopy over there, where there were a bunch of tables, and it it bounced off of a chair right at the end of the table. There's some tables up under there, and a couple of little kids sitting there, and. Uh, I think it, it, it got some eyes open pretty wide there. That pitch missed outside. Two balls, two strikes to Machuca. Yeah, let's see Jason Campbell down there. He's an investigator with the city, so pretty good hand supervising the kiddos down there. He's investigating to see where <laughs> if that left a dent. It may have. 2-2 two, two pitch is high. Count full to Machuca leading off the fifth inning for SAU. Ty Manning will be next, then Tucker Burton. I'm sure Jeff Jester is roaming around. Ah, I can see him. It's hard to miss Jeff. You can pretty much find him in a in a packed crowd. Here's the 3-2. Low and away. Ball four. Lead off walk for Machuca. Good job there working the count. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. That flashed into my head. Uh, Cousin Eddie and the... Uh, Christmas vacation when the lady was describing the guy that that uh, that kidnapped her husband. Uh, he was a beast, he was a beastly man. <laughs> Wait, are you just did you just call Jeff cousin cousin, cousin Eddie. Eddie? Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, Jester and cousin Eddie. Hey, look, he has he hasn't ever given us that free meal. He, That's he, true. He, he's, that he owes us. So it's about yeah, three I'm, years, isn't it? There's a check swing, strike one to Ty Manning. Yeah, I, f- I feel like that uh, he's free game now since he <laughs> since he reneges on his uh, on his free meals. Yeah, that steak is drawing all kinds of interest at this point. 
Yeah, it ought to be at least up to prime rib by now. <laughs> 4 3 SAU. One on, nobody out. Top of the fifth for SAU. Manning at the plate. The 0 1 pitch. Manning lines it right at the second baseman. Throw to first for the double play. And just a tough luck out. Tom Manning. It continues. He hit the ball hard again, just right at the second baseman mix. And, man, Machuca just really didn't have a chance there. He froze and tried to get back to the bag. And Mix made a good throw over. Not not much you can do about that one. No, and they had the shift on. Otherwise, that will be through for a base hit. But they had yeah. the shift on. They had second baseman playing just to the right of the bag. And he was right at him. And, I mean, he just ca caught it and threw. And, uh, yeah, Machuca was toast. So two out bases empty now. Tucker Burton at the plate for the Mule Riders. The pitch to him. And the outside corner for a strike. Tanner Brown in his fifth inning of work. So both starters still in this game at this point. A couple of lefties. Crafty lefties. Is that what they call me? They That's it. Look, you never see of a never hear of a crafty right hander. 0-1 pitch is fouled back over the backstop and out of play. Yeah, I think any lefty that doesn't throw like 94-plus is going to be considered a, a crafty lefty. This guy throws pretty hard, though. Yeah, he it? does. He's got, he's got a lively fastball. And this game, doesn't it feel like a game of chess right now where both teams are still just kind of yeah. filling each other out? Scratching for a run here yeah. and there. 0-2 pitch. Burton swinging a miss. He is down on strikes and... SAU goes down in the top of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. Go to the bottom of the fifth with SAU on top, four to three. This is Mule Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country, 99.1. Rocket Fast, it's a blast, and your vehicle is clean. Rocket Fast Unlimited Wash Plans are the best way to keep your car spotless. Now our washes and plans are even more affordable. Did you know you can purchase our Fast Pass for the price of a single wash? That's right, wash your car as many times as you want for 30 days for the price of a single wash. There has never been a better time to get your Fast Pass. Join thousands of others who already enjoy unlimited washing at all of our locations. Rocket Fast, the fast and easy way to wash your car. Magnolia Travel Center is the place to be. Get a spring in your step with our Flavor to Cup coffee machine that will have you ready for whatever the day brings. Also try the Flavor Shot Fountain Center with over 250 drink combinations. Happy hour from 2 till 6 p.m. How about the frozen yogurt with topping bar, hot dogs, daily breakfast, and champs chicken, home-style lunch combos, kids' meals, and more. Grab and go with our fresh fruit, salads, and pizza served all day. It's all happening in Magnolia Travel Center. Follow us on Facebook for updates. Our mid-game summary, a service of Magnolia Regional Medical Center. The American Cancer Society recommends women receive annual mammograms beginning at age 40. At Magnolia Regional Medical Center, they offer state-of-the-art digital mammography in a comfortable and friendly environment. Call to schedule your appointment at 235-3516. Through four and a half, Augustana, three runs, five hits, no errors, two left. Southern Arkansas, four runs, six hits, no errors, with five left. Mars Pitts, there's a base hit through the left side from Ben Erke, leading off the fifth, the bottom of the fifth for Augustana. So he singles to left. Yeah, and first, top of the order now, Max Mosser. First pitch swinging, and he drilled that one between short and third. Max Mosser. Augustana's pitcher, Brown, has pitched five innings, given up six hits, four runs, all earned. He's walked three, struck out four. Has uh, thrown one wild pitch and hit a couple of batters. The hitter, Mosser, the pitch comes. He lays down a bunt, drag bunt to the right side. Marr going for it. He flips it and gets the runner at first base just barely, and he might have hurt himself as he had to barehand it, fully stretched out and went down hard, and he acts like he might have hurt himself there as he just went through with the bare hand and shoveled it over to first base, and Coach Pettigrew is out to check on his pitcher, Wyatt Marr. Yeah, and one of the trainers coming out, and that was a that was an athletic play. I thought that was going to be a bunt single all the way, and Marr, good job extending out. He was racing towards the first base bag and had to barehand it and extend, and and it was just a diving attempt, kind of glo catching it and throwing it in one motion over to his first baseman Machuca, and he's going to 
Looks like maybe take a warm-up pitch or two here yeah, to see he if might, he's okay. I need to. And Coach Petter is going to stay out there and the umpire while he while he tries to uh, throw a pitch or two. Let's see. The, he threw one there. And yeah, he's having some. It was his, it was his bare hand. He had a bare hand. So I don't know if he jammed his hand into the dirt or what. I didn't, didn't get a good look at it. So he was shaking out the left arm. Looks like he's all right. Coach Pettigrew is headed back to the dugout. At least he's going to continue. We shall see. Yeah, they may. That might go ahead and get the SAU bullpen up, though, just in case. Yeah, I think Mosser was was bunting there, trying to bunt for a base hit, looked like. But uh, he doesn't get the base hit, but he does get the sacrifice as the runner, Erky, went to second. Carter Howell, the hitter, he had a two-run bomb in the third inning. It's one for two on the day. The pitch from Marr is fouled back and out of play. Marr's numbers has pitched four and a third innings, given up six hits, three runs, all earned. He has not walked a batter. He has struck out two. He's not hit a batter either. He has given up one home run. The 0-1 pitch to Howell. Is off the fist, popped up, back toward the backstop. Catcher McGee comes back to the screen, but it carried just to the other side of the screen and out of play. Just just out of room as it goes just behind those front seats, just behind the backstop. Offensively, two mule riders with two hits. One of them, Brett McGee, who had a solo home run to lead off the third inning. He also singled in the first. He's scored a couple of runs for SAU and Nickel, who bats right behind him, also with a couple of hits, a bunt single and an RBI single. So he has scored a run as well. Machuca with an RBI. There's a pitch outside. Machuca had an RBI single in the first inning. That's about the offense for SAU so far in this game. Over on the other side. Mix and Erky, each with two hits. All singles, spin towards second by Marr, no throw. One home run, that was Howell's home run in the third inning. He's the gentleman at the plate right now. On the scoreboard, four to three, SAU. Home team, Augustana batting in the bottom of the fifth. Lifts one high in the air out to left center field. That's carrying well at the wall. Manning cannot. He thought about leaping to try to pull it down, but it carries over the wall in left center field. Back-to-back two-run home runs, and that's going to give Augustana their first lead of the afternoon. Home run number 17 for Carter Howell. That looks like... It was going to be playable, but uh, again, I think when you get up, get up a little bit, that there's some air moving up there. We've seen it on on pop ups. We saw it when uh, Sutton caught that pop up in the last half yeah. inning over there. That all of a sudden the wind kind of blew it behind him. Anything high in the air, and that one off the bat of Hal was definitely high in the air, and carries on out. There's a bunt over to the first base side. That's past the pitcher. Sutton charges. Can't come up with it. Now the runner's going to turn and head to second base. As Sutton does a tumble, there was a collision between Sutton and the base runner. Yeah, there was. It actually tripped Sutton. is going to come have a conference with the umpire to see maybe if that was I, I don't know if it's... I, I'm not sure what the... the yeah, he's... he's Questioning him, so uh, Sutton did a tumble trying to go get that ball as he as he tried to just shovel it over with his glove, glove hand, yeah. and then he and the runner both uh, came together there. And that's the only shot Sutton would have had at getting him out. He would not have had time to transition the ball from his glove to his hand and make the shovel across. Well, the runner ends up at second base. No interference call. So, Barth at second with two out. Five to four, Augustana leads. So I call that probably, a double. Yeah. They're going double all the way out. Yep. 
I'll say. I didn't know if you could charge him with an error on that. There's a strike called to uh, Olsen. I'm going to say if they don't call interference, I would have probably gone with uh, infield hit and and then an error as it as it got away out into right field from Sutton. It would have been a tough error, but the runner doesn't get to second without it getting away. Curveball swing and a miss. But but I'm not. I'll go with the double. Yeah, there is action. Someone up and throwing in the Mule Rider bullpen. Whatever the case may be, it's a runner at second base with two out. No balls, two strikes to Will Olson. Marr looks to second, now comes to the plate, just missed outside. Little out and low. One and two to Olson. That was a good location to try to get him to chase, but he did not. Olson steps back in. Vikings lead 5-4. Runner in scoring position with two out. A spin towards second by Marr. No throw. It's one of those games that just like the one last night, you're never going to feel comfortable. No, no. Marr's ready. Here's his pitch. Check swing. Pitch low. What the last second Olsen held off on the swing. Two balls, two strikes to Will Olson. Jack Hines, the shortstop, would be next. One for two on the day. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. He took a fastball for a strike. About belt high, and that's out number two. Yeah, buckled him there with the fastball in. Olson not expecting... The challenge for Moore. Two men out. Now Jack Hines. I think I may have said two out earlier. It just felt like it. <laughs> <laughs> wishful Maybe thinking. Maybe it was wishful thinking, yeah. <laughs> Surely after all of that, there had to be two outs. Jack Hines at the plate. Runner at second, two out. First pitch to him. Breaking ball in the dirt. McGee keeps it in front of him. Keeps the runner at second. Fun at the old ballpark here this afternoon. Where did Lyles go? Did the ball get away down there or something? Yeah, must have. He was over in the bullpen area. He is deep in left field. Sign comes in from the dugout for the pitch. Now Mars is ready to go. His 1-0 pitch on the way. Fast ball, little in, I guess. 2-0. That gets the fans a little upset. Look good from here, but you got a better angle with that inside corner than I do. I'd have called it a strike from here, but it doesn't guarantee that it was. It's a 2-0 count to Hines. Mars pitch. That's hit through the hole on the left side. That may drive in another run. Here he comes. Round third. Barth on the way. The throw off line. Cut off by Nickel. And he looks over to first. Runner stays put there. So Hines drives one through the left side to drive in another run. And it's a two, two run advantage for the Vikings. Yeah, Augie struck for three runs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. So now JT Mix will come to the plate. First a visit to the mound, Coach Adam Anderson, the SAU pitching coach, will go out. Well, let's, let's go ahead and do our Mule Rider Spotlight, a service of Bod Call Bank. 2125 North Jackson and Magnolia, 307 Thomas in Stamps, and 3625 Richmond Road in Texarkana. Bot Call Bank serving us in South Arkansas since 1903. Local bank, local people enjoy the benefits of hometown banking at Bot Call Bank. In our Mule Rider Spotlight, the Sheriff Ford, a wide receiver on the SAU football team. He's from Camden, majoring in communications design as a 3.0 grade point average. Interests uh, include dancing and mentoring. After he graduates, he wants to play in the NFL or 
be a blueprint designer for new home builders. Always good to have a backup plan. That's true. Favorite moment as a mule rider was his crack block against East Central University. He must have laid somebody out. <laughs> <laughs> but the share forward. It's the U wide receiver on the football team in our Botco Bank Mule Rider Spotlight. Not often a receiver is going to tell you that the highlight of their career is a block, so it must have been, must it must have been, have been first good. class. Here's the pitch. Runner going line drive. Base hit into left field. Runner around second on his way to third. The throw in a little offline. So Hines goes first to third, and he had his head down, and he was going all the way. On a single to left off the bat of mix. Yeah, and all of a sudden, this inning, Augustana hitting Wyatt Marr very hard. The last two singles have been as sharp as you can, as you can hit them. Again, our Mirror Rider Spotlight Service of Bond Call Bank, serving us in South Arkansas since 1903. Three locations to serve you in Magnolia, Stamps, and Texarkana. You and I talked about before the game started. Certainly not going to be a situation where Augustana was just going to fold up and say, oh, okay, we lost the first game, we're done. And Well, you can see the class coming through now. Pitch gets away from McGee, and the runner from first will go down to second. Didn't get away too far, but it went behind him, and he wasn't sure where it was for a little bit. So a wild pitch sends Mix to second. Now let's hope that doesn't come back to hurt again. A single now instead of scoring one could score two. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but just kind of keep that in the back of your head. Jackson Rosencrantz is the hitter. He's 0 for 2 in this game. And he's the eighth man to bat in the inning for Augustana. This is the first big inning we've had. Uh, yeah, yeah, first to more than two runs. Yeah. There's the... One to the pitcher, Marr. Marr underhands and throws it too high and safe at first base. He just kind of flinched. I don't know what, I don't know if he had trouble getting it out of his glove or, or what, but. So I squeeze one in from third base. Hines comes in to score. That was a bunt, wasn't it? It was. Okay, I, I was looking leave. down just as he hit it. Yeah, Pettigrew's made the call to the bullpen. That's going to be an E1. So there will be a pitching change. Rosencrantz reached to at first, and that'll bring up Dirksen, the ninth man to hit in the inning, but he'll face a new pitcher. Four runs have scored so far in the inning. Augustana leads 7-4. This is Mule Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country 99.1. Hi folks, Jim Golden with Jim Golden Ford Lincoln in Camden. At Jim Golden Ford Lincoln, we say what we do and we do what we say. Honesty and integrity are the basis that our business is built on. At Jim Golden Ford Lincoln, we believe in our community and support our local churches, schools, charities through donations and individual efforts. Our award-winning sales and service department attest to the fact our customers are the number one priority. Take advantage of hometown deals and service where the dealer makes the difference at Jim Golden Ford Lincoln in Camden. Hey everybody, this is Christy Way, owner of Mule Kick in Magnolia. Everybody knows that Mule Kick was voted one of Arkansas's top dining experiences for the past two years. But did you know that in addition to pizza and wings, craft beer and coffee, our managers have been expanding our catering ability to provide a perfect business lunch, either at your location or ours. Call 870-562-2600 today and ask for Matt or Jim. You can also visit MuleKickMag.com. It's Mule Kick, never business as usual. Bailey's Body Shop is your one-stop shop for collision repair. They can do it all, from handling the estimate for you to getting the information to your insurance company. Owner Danny Bailey has been doing auto body work for over 40 years, and Bailey Body Shop is built on quality and trust. You don't have to worry about it. They're there when you need them. When you need collision repair, trust Bailey's Body Shop, 2416 North Vine in Magnolia, 234-3303. Chance Bolter is the new pitcher for Southern Arkansas. Chance's numbers on the year, 3-0 record with a 4.50 ERA. This will be his 13th appearance, all in relief. Has one save, obviously not a save opportunity. He's pitched 16 innings, given up 19 hits, 8 runs. All, all 8 were earned. He's walked 10 and struck out 11. So Chance Bolter, the pitcher, 
for uh, Southern Arkansas to try to stop the bleeding. Bolter, uh, six foot, 185 pound sophomore out of Plano, Texas. The pain, uh, Dirk, Dre Dirksen will be the ninth man to hit in the inning for Augustana. First and third with two out. After the error on the pitcher, Wyatt Moore allowed Rosencrantz to reach. Two men are out. Runner goes from first. And he stole that one off the pitcher. He took off first movement. He was gone. Yeah, I think Augustana may have also been trying to get in a run down to see if the runner from third could come in and score SAU. One, you're right, it was a tremendous jump, but two, I don't think SAU was real interested in getting in a rundown in this situation. A one pitch to Dirksen, and that looked good. It's called ball one. One ball, one strike to Dirksen. Erky on deck. Erky, Erky led this inning off with an RB, or with a single, rather, and he came around to score. Ahead of Howell when he hit that two run homer. One one pitch. Chopper to the left side, charging Nickel. He juggles a little bit, throws low, out over at first base. Dirksen is retired. And finally, the Vikings are retired in the bottom half of the fifth inning. They scored four runs in the inning on uh, four base, five base hits, excuse me. There was one error and two men left on base. Through five, Augustana leads seven to four. This is Mule Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. If you're dreaming of owning a new home, let the dream team at People's Bank help. Since 1910, we've helped customers afford the home of their dreams, and we love what we do. People's Bank has some of the lowest interest rates around, even lower than what you might find online. With down payments as low as 5%, our experienced and friendly loan officers make home ownership easy and affordable. Put our dream team to work for you. Come by or give us a call at 234-5777. People's Bank. Building dreams, one loan at a time. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Thank you from Jennifer's for making the Blossom Festival great again. Jennifer's was glad to see you and thanks for stopping by. Also, good luck to the Mule Riders this week. Stop in at Jennifer's and check out what's new and exciting for summer. There are lots of new arrivals like new Alley Miles tops, new John Mark tops, beautiful new dresses that are great for summer, and much, much more. So stop by and take a look at Jennifer's on the south side of the Magnolia Square. Open all week, but closed Memorial Day. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, the experienced team at Southern Caregivers provides expert care to you and your loved ones. Southern Caregivers also provides needed support for seniors, allowing them to remain in the comfort of their own home and maintain their independence. The nurturing and caring companions can be matched to meet emotional, spiritual, and physical needs of the individuals they care for. Call 501-463-9990 today and speak with one of our professionals or visit southerncaregiversar.com. SAU has been out hit in this game 10 to 6 and uh, Augustana leads in the run column 7 to 4. Muir Riders bottom three in the order do up here in the top of the sixth inning. Down by three to the Vikings. Chris Lyles, Connor Allen, and Riley Orr do up for SAU. Tanner Brown is sixth inning of work for the Vikings. His pitch is a little inside for ball one. We got a battle. Mia Riders and the Vikings. Pitch comes. There's a strike on the outer part of the plate to Lyles. After the game, got our Farm Bureau post-game show. Farm Bureau's deductible rewards program rewards their safe drivers with earning percentage credits on the deductibles. The only rewards program of its kind in the state. There's a foul back to the backstop. To learn more about that deductible rewards program, just go to Farm Bureau's website, AFBIC, Arkansas Farm Bureau, AFBIC.com slash drive down, AFBIC.com slash drive down. 
A ball and two strikes to Lyles. Brown delivers. Way outside. After the game, we'll name our People's Bank player of the game. Before you lock in a mortgage rate online, talk to People's Bank first. People's Bank offers great rates on mortgage loans for a new home purchase and refinancing. Plus, People's Bank makes it so easy by being with you every step of the way. People's Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Pitch comes, swing and a miss, and down on strikes goes Lyles. So there's one away here in the top half of the sixth inning. Brown appears to be getting stronger. That's uh, going back to the last inning. Two batters back-to-back that he has struck out. Yeah, he is. Over the last couple innings, looks like a different pitcher than the one we saw early on. That's his fifth strikeout. The pitch outside to Connor Allen. Allen's 0 for 2, and he's been a strikeout victim. Uh, Brown. Brown working quickly. Allen lays down a bunt, but right back to the pitcher on two hops, and he throws it away at first base. Allen makes the turn. He's on his way to second base as the throw comes in from the right fielder. So an error on the pitcher allows the runner, Connor Allen, to get to second base. Well, for some reason, the first baseman came charging in, and then he had to quickly reverse course. That that bunt was the pitcher's all the way. It was, wasn't right back to the mound, but it was pretty close. And I think the pitcher looked up, expected his first baseman, Mosser, to be on the bag, and he was, Mosser was having to do a 180 to try to get back in time, and that just threw, threw everything off for Augustana. Yeah, and then... Brown airmailed it over there, so Allen's down at second with one out. Well, we had an error on the <laughs> yeah. side, and now one on the uh, Augustana side. Brings Riley Orr to the plate. Brown's pitch to him. Orr listed in the air to the right side. That's in foul ground. Long run for the right fielder, and he does not get there in foul ground. That, is, that actually kind of came back toward him. I think he, he might have given up a little early out there. I was about to say the same thing. I'm at least curious why he didn't make a dive at it. It, it fell almost at his feet. Yeah, he wasn't very far away from it when it when it hit. I, th- I think, again, that the I think wind. up as the wind, as he gets up a little bit, that wind is playing havoc with, with pop-ups. Right now, the wind's pretty much blowing straight out, according to the flag. But, again, up about uh, 40, 50 feet. We're not sure what's going on up there. A one pitch to Orr. He lays down a bunt up the third base side. It goes foul. He brought the third baseman. He wanted to bunt it to the third baseman, make him play it, and get Allen over to third and trying to beat it out, meanwhile, at first. But it went foul. Good idea. Yeah, really good idea and didn't miss it by much as it just rolls foul. But now all of a sudden, Riley Orr is going to find himself in an 0-2 hole. And he ran hard going to first, so he's taking his time coming back to uh, to home plate. It's a good idea. Catch your breath a little bit. Two-strike count on Riley Orr with Allen at second and one man out. Top of the order with Chris Sutton on deck for the Mule Riders. Long look by Brown, the pitcher. Set. Does not check second. The pitch comes. It's down low. A one ball, two strike count. Yeah, catcher Dirksen tried to frame it up a little bit, but clearly below the zone. I'm going to say... Allen's, uh, they better not take Allen for granted out there. He'll take third, especially with the third baseman playing back. The one ball, two strike count. Time called as Orr gets something in the eye. A little, little wind, as we said, picked up and looks like it blew something in on him. Well, this game's a long way from over, but it's getting late. Three run advantage. For the Vikings. And the pitch. And Orr takes it toward, toward right. Rosencrantz, though, backs up, makes the catch, tag at second base, but not going to try the arm of Rosencrantz in right. He got it over to third base on one hop. It was offline a little bit. 
Uh, still would have been bang, bang at third. Good idea. Again, you don't want to make that third out at third base. So there are two gone now, and Chris Sutton at the plate for the Mule Riders. Sutton is one for three. From the stretch, Brown. Here comes the pitch. It's in there for a strike. Sutton singled in the fourth inning. And uh, on the single, the RBI single from Nickel that drove in Orr, Sutton tried to go to third and was thrown out. Trying to get over to third base. No balls and a strike to Sutton. Shortstop sneaks in behind the runner, and the throw back there is not close. At that point, the shortstop, you just wanted to, th you wanted to throw it to him rather than at the bag. Sometimes your tendency there would be to throw it at the bag, and the shortstop wasn't at the bag. He was still a few feet away. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Sutton looked at a fastball strike on the outside part of the plate. Yeah, Brown, all of a sudden, the last couple of innings has been working ahead in the count, and that makes a big difference. It's a no-ball, two-strike count to Sutton. Sutton's ready. Now Brown is ready. Here comes his pitch. Way high. Good job by the catcher to stretch out and pull it down. So a one-two count to Chris Sutton. Yeah, Brown's not looking back at that runner at second base. He just, he stretches and he comes in. I don't know if he's got somebody that he's, somebody that's maybe maybe the catcher maybe would flash him a sign if, if he needed to step off. A ball and two strikes to Sutton. Two out, one on. The pitch comes. He hits it out toward right field. And that'll carry to the right fielder, Rosencrantz. And that takes care of SAU in the top of the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, one error, and one man left on base as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Seven to four, Augie. This is Mirrider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. Your locally owned and operated Domino's is open. Domino's is open for carryout at the drive through and delivery. Domino's has contactless options for delivery as well as carryout. Call Domino's in Magnolia at 870-234-4141 or order online at dominoes.com. Domino's is open 1030 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 1030 to midnight Friday and Saturday. Domino's on East Main in Magnolia. Thank you for shopping all local businesses. Today is the day. After countless hours of research, cutting back expenses, and nine months of anxiously waiting for her, today is the day you finally bring home your new car. It's also the day to protect her with an auto policy from Shelter Insurance. Our policies are competitively priced and include new car replacement coverage if anything were to happen to your new baby. Ask Shelter agent Gary Donfera about Shelter's competitive auto insurance rates. Locally owned and operated, Wilson Bearden Pharmacy now offers medical synchronization so that you can pick up your meds on the same day each month. They also offer free delivery in city limits. Vaccines for shingles, pneumonia, and COVID-19 are also available. Need a gift? Check out Wilson Bearden's variety of knives, flags, girly girl tees, and purses. Stop by and see Ivy Moore and her team at Wilson Bearden Pharmacy, 134 North Washington, serving Magnolia since 1945. Magnolia Regional Medical Center is excited about the addition of orthopedic surgeon Dr. James Kevin Rudder. Dr. Rudder grew up in South Arkansas and has been practicing for the last 20 years in Hot Springs. Dr. Rudder provides full orthopedic services with specialization in joint replacements. Also sports medicine and sports injury and orthopedic trauma including breaks and fractures. Referrals or appointments are accepted. Call the Magnolia Surgical Clinic at 870-235-3200. About 87 degrees here at the old ballpark with a little light wind. Right now, that wind is pretty much blowing out. 
to center. That win. That win's been changing directions all day. Well, Augustana batted around in the fifth. So Erkey will lead off the the sixth inning as well. First pitch missed inside for ball one. Yeah, with the wind blowing out, especially, certainly three runs can be overcome as far as Augustana lead. Here's the pitch. It's in there for a strike. One ball, one strike to Erkey. But you don't want to give up any more ground. Yeah, Bolter may be a big key in whether the whether we can keep this game close and give the Muir Riders a chance to come back late. There's a ground ball to the right side. Second baseman way out on the outfield grass, but he still comes up with it and throws the runner, Erky out at first base. Yeah. He had to charge on that one because it wasn't hit very hard. Yeah, that was a full-out charge. I mean, Sutton running in full speed and good hustle by him playing that rover position in shallow right field. Getting a good read and coming in on it. So they take care of the leadoff man, Erky, and now it's Mosser, Max Mosser. It's 0 for 1 with a couple of sacrifices. The pitch to him from Bolter is down low for ball one. Bolter's got those busy feet on the mound. He kind of pumps his feet up and down before coming set. 7-4, Augustana. The pitch comes. That's in the air out to left field. Lyles comes in and a little over toward the line and makes the catch. There are two out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And it'll be Carter Howell to the plate. Carter Howell has done some damage today. He has had a uh, had a good day. He's two for three. Those two were both two-run bombs. And he hit them well. Yes. I mean, anyone that gets out of the ballpark obviously has hit well, but I mean, he really hit him. Yeah, well. that first one he tattooed. Here's the pitch to him. Down low, ball one. Jordan Barth moves on deck. Well, the Mule Rider fans don't have a lot to, lot to get excited about. Haven't in a while, not since the third inning. Well, make it the fourth, excuse me. There's one chop to the left side. Takes a big hop to the shortstop or throws across. Good stretch at first by Machuca. And the Vikings go one, two, three in the bottom of the sixth. Seven to four, SAU. This is Beerwater Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. AMC Waldo, Magnolia, Columbia County. You may never need any type of long-term care, but if you did, could you afford it? Talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor, Steve Hardy, Laura Kroll, Mark Woods, or Ethan Young. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey, you. Yeah, you. It's time to step up to the plate at the Corner Clubhouse on the Magnolia Square. Remember, it's a short stop away to experience delicious pulled pork smoked in-house, baked potatoes, burgers, a full bar, and the best ribeyes cut in-house over an open flame. The Corner Clubhouse is open Monday through Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Don't strike out. Satisfy your cravings with a grand slam at the Corner Clubhouse, 100 South Washington in Magnolia. Hiring someone you trust can be the hardest part of owning a business. At Bo Moses Trucking, trust has been at the top of our list. When you need to get precious cargo from one place to another without worrying about damage, delays, or lost freight, Bo Moses Trucking is the one to count on. Based in Magnolia, Arkansas, since 1999, we have the resources and equipment to take care of all your flatbed freight hauling. Visit us on Facebook or call 870-234-2803. Bo Moses Trucking. Trust us to go the distance. For the seventh inning, Augustana leading the Mule Riders by a score seven to four. Tanner Brown back to work for Augustana. He struggled early, but he has gotten things on track. Yeah, he's set late. Yeah, it's going to be Brett McGee, Brandon Nickel, and Jacob Machuca, the two, three, and four hitters, do up for the Mule Riders. I say he's only managed six hits against this guy. He's got two of those, two out of three on the afternoon as he looks at a called strike one. Yeah, McGee singled and scored a run in the first, had the solo home run in the third, and then struck out in the fourth. Man, Brown is 
Had it locked in since then. The 0-1 to McGee. Another off speed, and there's a called strike, too. And that's been the key. I mean, Brown early on was struggling getting ahead in the count, and the last three innings, he has been ahead of the Mule Rider hitters more often than not. As he has Brett McGee in the hole, no balls, two strikes. The 0-2 outside. That wind's kind of blowing out towards left field now, so... Augustana again has action in the bullpen. Thomas Bruss out getting loose. The one-two pitch, fastball outside. Evens count, two balls, two strikes. He has walked three and hit a couple of batters. On the year, he's not he's not been a pitcher to walk a whole lot of them. New Riders having a hard time teeing off on this guy. Count even at two and two. Fastball, swing and a miss, strike three. Brett McGee, the first out here in the top of the seventh inning. Yeah, he's gotten Goodness. stronger as this game has gone on. Yeah, strikeout number six on the afternoon for Brown. So I don't have a pitch count, but I don't think his, his count would be that high because your riders have, have, have not sent a lot of men to the plate in, in, in one inning except in that third inning when they sent... Uh, but six men to the plate. And it's still time for SAU, but down to eight outs at this point. Brandon Nickel steps in, the Mule Rider third baseman. Two for two on the afternoon. First pitch, I believe, was that inside or high or a little bit of both? I, I think maybe a little both, but I'm pretty sure it was inside. Ball one. Brown working pretty quickly. Next pitch, swing and a miss as he took something off that on the outer half, and Nickel was way out in front of the pitch. Even scout, one ball, one strike. Nickel has scored a run and knocked one in. That pitch fouled over the Mule Rider dugout. And again, pitcher Tanner Brown ahead of the count, one ball, two strikes. Jacob Machuca on deck. For SAU. Trying to find a way to get Brown out of his rhythm that he's found the last three innings. The pitch off speed hit towards third under the glove of Barth, and that should be an E5. It wasn't hit hard at all, and maybe that's what threw Barth off. It just scooted right underneath the glove, and there's a one out. We'll see if it's a hit or an error. Oh, it's going to be an E5. He just never got his glove now. Yeah, that's... Uh, We've seen Barth make some excellent plays defensively at third base, but not, uh, not that time. Brandon Nickel on board. Jacob Machuca, your rider cleanup man and first baseman to the plate. See if we can make that error sting a little bit. The shift is on. Three infielders on the first base side of second. Just one on the third base side. Pitch off speed, fouled into the dirt. 0-1. Outfield shifted over a little bit as well. Not a major shift by the center fielder, but he is playing on the first base side of second. The left fielder is essentially playing in left center field. If Machuca hits one down the line at, in left, he can run for days. 0-1, oh, swing and a miss. And Machuca down in the count, no balls, two strikes. Big enough swing that he got the got the crowd going. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> wishing he had made contact. Yeah, Machuca was looking fastball, got the off speed, and time to get defensive in the box. The 0-2, way outside and high. Pretty conservative lead at first base for Brandon Nickel. Ty Manning on deck, who has had a tough luck 0 for 2. He's hit the ball well. The 1-2 to Machuca. That one foul, I believe, into the mitt for strike three. And they're now two down in the inning. Strikeout number seven. And both outs so far in the top of the seventh have come by way of strikeout. Ty Manning to the plate for SAU. 
Strikeout numbers are picking up. Four of his last six outs recorded have been by strikeout. Yeah, again, seven total strikeouts this afternoon. Ty Manning stands in. The pitch all speed in the dirt taken for ball one. Manning officially 0 for 2 on the day. Was hit by a pitch and stole a base back in the third inning. Have you ever played Wordle? Yes. I've, I've played I, Wordle. I had never played Wordle. So this morning I'm sitting around and I decide, oh, I'm going to give it a shot. See what everybody's, everybody's going crazy with that stuff. Pitch fastball gets past the catcher inside, and that should be a pass ball. Yeah. Nickel easily into second base on a jog. So anyway, so I go on there and second try, I get it. So I so I posted on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it on my second try. That was easy. That's that's it for me. I'm going back to going back to Non-word going back to solitaire life. or something. Yeah, yeah and I and I've, I offended some people. I think. People take that stuff seriously. It's just a guessing game. People basically. have too much time on their hands. That one lifted up into center field is going to be playable. Howell underneath it. Gloves it for out number three. Mule riders, no runs, no hits. There were no errors. One or one, one error, one left on base as we head into the seventh inning stretch. Augustana leading the Mule Riders by a score of 7-4. to four. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. I'm Faith Armstrong. If you worry about your safety or your loved ones, Columbia County Ambulance Service would like you to know about CareLink. CareLink provides an instant link to emergency response every minute, every day. The standard version provides protection surrounding the home, and a mobile unit offers protection anywhere. The area covered includes Columbia, Hempstead, Nevada, Washita, Lafayette Counties, and Claiborne Parish. Call Columbia County Ambulance today to schedule your installation. Since 1906, Farmers Bank and Trust has served customers throughout South Arkansas. This year, we've added nine new communities in Arkansas and Oklahoma. We're committed to serving and investing in our new and legacy communities. In Magnolia, we're not the new bank in town, but you've always made us feel at home. When you need a bank perfect for your season of life, come home to Farmers Bank and Trust. Visit myfarmers.bank to learn more. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Sweet Onion Steak Teriyaki is now available at Subway on East Main and Magnolia. Steak, cheese, onions, peppers, and Sweet Onion Teriyaki, and you can customize it as you like. Let me tell you about some other Subway heroes. Baja Steak and Jack, Honey Mustard, Rotisserie Style Chicken, Baja Chicken and Bacon, and Turkey Cali Fresh. Subway still has all your other favorites, too. Use the app like I do and earn rewards at Subway in University Plaza Shopping Center on East Main and Magnolia. Jordan Barth to lead things off for Augustana here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Again, Augustana with a three-run lead. Seven to four. Bolter's first pitch outside for ball one. So I guess I've made everybody mad that plays Wordle now, right? <laughs> I don't. Anybody that has enough time to get mad about Wordle, they're, they're they some got more, too much time on their hands. There like are some said, yeah. Yeah, bigger suppressed issues somewhere in their life. The 1 0, that one drilled foul. Let's see if that does damage. Ooh. They get one? Yeah, I think so. I can't see that that direction. I can't see, and I'd rather not see it if it's gonna Gary tear Don, up somebody's car. Yeah, Gary Don may get a may get a call Tuesday. That's what he's there for. That's it. The one one outside. Again, Barth had the error back in the bottom of the first. Let's hope he's not trying to make amends here. All I know is why the the one of the main reasons I go on Facebook every day is to is to see everybody's Wordle score. And to see what people eat. <laughs> yes. Foul back and out of play. You just count two and two. That's why I'm, I'm a non. I'm a non Facebook. I, I, I don't put food on there very often. I've seen people that put some of their creations on Facebook, and I think, and you're really going to eat that <laughs> <laughs> stuff that I don't. I don't think I would. I'm not sure I'd feed it to the dog. I don't know. <laughs> I think you should. Some of them. <laughs> The 2-2 just outside as the count goes full. And they'll say they may say this thing about one of my one of my one of my creations, but I'm not gonna put it on Facebook. <laughs> I think Catherine put one of my 
creations on Facebook once, and I, I have, chewed her out. I have no <laughs> doubt about that. The full count pitch hit foul towards third base. Nickel gloves it, but it's foul, so we'll reset the 3-2 count. Yeah, Facebook is a world unto itself, evidently. I think that was just a picture of, of Bowen gnawing the uh, the pork, pork steak oh, bone. Well, that, <laughs> going Fred Flintstone on it. Yeah. 3-2 again. That one is going to be singled into left field off the end of the bat. Bar strong enough to muscle it out there. And there's a leadoff single from Augustana. Augie has come out here swinging a bat here today. Well, they have picked up steam. Again, that four-run bottom of the fifth is when they took control. Trying to do some more damage here. The number four hitter and designated hitter, Will Olson, to the plate. He is 0 for 3. Bolter comes set. Look at a throw over to first. Almost got him. Barth was over there kind of dancing around. I'm not sure what he was, that the was purpose a, of it. It was a heck of a heck of a pick over there. He but. almost got nabbed. It was a... Uh, Need to save dancing for the dancing with the stars for another another time. Another throw over. This time Barth back in standing up. Say so Bolter threw that one a little high. I'd just soon he maybe maybe make want to make that the last throw over there. <laughs> I don't know that first one was close enough. It uh, yeah, it was on the money, yeah. And he takes off the throw down to second base. Sutton gets the tag down, and Barth is out. Quite frankly, I think he slid under that tag. I do, too. Uh, but he is called out. The throw was a little bit high, so Sutton had to quickly drop the tag down on Barth. And he is called out, so Brett McGee takes care of Barth. He was caught stealing at second. It was bang, bang down there. Yet, and, we're, of course, we're far away, and we can't really see where that hand was, but uh, yeah, it was looked a, like the tag might have been late. That way, and hit softly out towards third off the handle. Nickel gloves, throws across, and he is safe. Machuca tried to do a slap tag, and the ball rolls out of his glove. Olsen, meanwhile, takes a stumble as I think he clipped heels with Machuca. He appears to be okay. I think if Machuca holds on to that ball, I'm not sure he didn't get the swipe tag down. I think he did. He hit him with the glove, but the ball yeah. came out of the glove. That's the right. throw was offline. That's got to be an E5. Yeah, it's an E5, and Nickel had plenty of time. Just kind of hurried the throw a little bit, and I believe that's Nickel's second error of the game. Good job by Machuca, though. Yeah, if that, that ball stayed in, and that would have been outstanding. That brings up Jack Hines. First pitcher called strike one. Hines is two for three on the day. Knocked in one, scored two runs. I think the other was ruled an infield single. That was the one he was had to back up on, and he threw and well, was he didn't it? get the run. They had an E1 now earlier. Okay. We had an error on Mara, the starter. Throw over to first, and Olsen dives back in safely. But there, I know what you're talking about, though. There was a play at third there that, that Nickel had to back up on. And okay, so that was an infield hit? I think so. Okay. Yeah, that was in the, in the third. Pitch that one lifted out towards right field. Hit pretty well. Connor Allen going back, makes the catch at the track. And the runner made it all the way to second base and quickly has to reverse course. He's back in safely. That ball carried pretty well. Connor Allen ends up making the catch and running into the wall, but there are two outs here at the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, he just got that one secured pretty well when he hit into the wall. So good job by Connor Allen going back to catch that one on the move back toward the wall. JT Mix, he is three for three. He's singled every time up for the Vikings. Bolter's pitch stays inside for ball one. Trying to throw the curveball, but it just did not break back in towards the plate. Bolzer came in in relief of Wyatt Marr. 
Pitch outside, two balls, no strikes to count. Mule Rider straight away, no wind at the moment. Pachuca holding the runner on at first. Bolter's pitch, fastball low and away, and it's 3-0. and All right, I got a personal message to pass along to Zach Harrington. It's not too late. <laughs> you still got an hour and 45 minutes till you say I do. So you still got, still got some time, Zach. <laughs> Shannon, you may not live fast tonight. Four-pitch walk as J.T. Bick strolls down to first base. I got some boo birds there. Move Olsen down to second. No, actually, I put that on Facebook for Shannon earlier. I told her I'm usually the guy that says that, but... And now you now yeah, you've officially said yeah, so, but so no yeah. but I'm just joking around I know <laughs> <laughs> Zach's been looking forward to this so has Shannon Shannon's looking forward to grandchildren and Jeff as long as it's a boy <laughs> oh, wow this is first pitch outside for ball one and probably Connor too <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all my responses, I, I just, I think I'll reserve them right now. <laughs> I'm just seeing how many. Yeah, so, so I've got all, so, okay, so I've got the Wordle people mad at me. Uh-huh. I got the, 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 the cookers and put it on Facebook mad at me, and now I got. And now all now I got the whole Har- Now I got the whole Harrington family yeah, mad at me. Yeah, We're going to have a visit to the mound with Coach Anderson. It's not the first time with the Harringtons, though. Yes. No, it's not. Yeah, those people are. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we wish all the best for, for Zach and, and Ashley. Wish them a long, 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 happy life together. Umpires. And, and, many, and many grandchildren, boys and girls, for, for, for uh, Shannon and Jeff. Grandchildren. Maybe at least let them get past the honeymoon before you're uh, throwing grandchildren out there. But, yeah. One and oh, the count. There's a mound visit as Moore has thrown five straight out of the strike zone. See if he can get settled back in. So you don't think Mama's already been talking about it? <laughs> well, I'm just, you know. Uh, nothing wrong with the little pause in life at times. The one oh, outside, two balls, no strikes is, excuse me, Chance Bolter. Chance Bolter is. Struggling to find the zone here. Hopefully, it's close enough to uh, to I do time that uh, that the Harringtons aren't hearing any of this. And we're going to have some action in the SAU bullpen. Next pitch outside is three and zero oh again, and Bolter's in danger of having back to back four pitch walks. That was Reed Osborne that was that was headed down to the bullpen very quickly. Yeah, they're going to get they're going into scramble mode. The 3-0 pitch. There's a get-me-over fastball. and whew. I don't know if we need to throw that pitch again. Rosencrantz has some has some pop. He's got eight home runs. I think he was had one of the solo shots last night. The 3-1 pitch from Bolter. That one lifted back and out of play. And good job by Bolter to battle back. And counts now full. After the game, got our Farm Bureau post-game show. Talk to your local Farm Bureau insurance agents. Mike Jones, Stephen Zorsch, Brett Blair, Jeff Hansen. They would love to help you out with all of your insurance needs. The full count pitch. Fastball, and that's going to get through the gap between short and third and score another run for Augustana. There's a two-out RBI single from Jackson Rosencrantz. Damn, that one not hit hard either. It just slipped right through the hole on the left side. Just just hit per, in a perfect position where it was able to make it through the hole. Yeah, Will Olson was off with the pitch. Two outs and a full count, so he had a jump. He scores easily from second base, and now still runners at first and second. Two out. The catcher, Dre Dirks, into the plate. He is looking for his first hit of the afternoon, 0 for 3. Erickson was 1 for 3 yesterday. First pitch outside. 
Dirksen again. I think now the uh, co-leader in the home run department with 16 on the season. Got Luke Ballway going on deck, so we're going to have a pinch hitter if Dirksen gets on, looks like. Pitch fastball, foul and out of play. Ballwick is just such a, he's a big fella, 6'5", 240. He's a big fella standing over there in the on-deck circle. Well, so I will say this guy, he's, 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 he's not tiny, no. will have his weight, but yeah, he's a big young man as well. 1-1, one, one, he actually threw it behind yeah, Dirk's behind his head, too, and he had to duck away from that one. It's a curveball, and... He is fortunate he didn't back up on that one. A lot of time you'll back up to try to get away from a pitch, but that one was behind him, so he would have backed right into it and taken it in the ear hole, but it was an off-speed pitch, so wouldn't hurt much. The 2-1. Fastball catches the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes, the count. Bolter trying to limit the damage to one run here in the bottom of the seventh. Augustana leading by a score of 8-4, to four, and Bolter trying to keep it right there. It's a look over at second. Comes home, fastball outside, and count goes full again. He takes a look into the dugout, gets the sign. Bolter, Cubs set. Sutton cheating behind the bag at second. Now he spritz out. There's a foul ball. It's a good pitch by Bolter. Even better job by the hitter, Dirksen, just to foul it off and get a piece. Bolter, has, he's, he has not been in a game for more than three innings. Of course, he hasn't, he hasn't made that yet in this game, but maybe tiring a little. I think he's worked too full. The pitch off of the outside corner, ball four, and the bases are loaded. And we are going to have the, it's going to be the pinch hitter. It's a ball, yeah, ball wig. Ball wig. Ball wig. Oh, something in that vicinity. How about that? Dirksen walks to first. So he's batting for the guy who ran for him last night. No, I take that back. He ran for Olsen last night. That's right. But Erksy out. Ballweg in. Base is loaded. Nowhere to put him. First pitch out of the zone for ball one. And this is... Big spot here. This one could blow the game wide open. Fastball inside, and it's quickly two balls, no strikes. And Coach Pettigrew going to the mound, and we're going to have a pitching change. He's already made the motion to the bullpen. So we'll tell you about the new pitcher after this. Bottom of the seventh. Bases loaded, two out. Augustana leading SAU by a score of eight to four. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. Shake off winter with the all-new spring arrangements at Bridges on the Square. Located on the Magnolia Square, Bridges has arrangements like the watercolor blooms bouquet and the wonderful whimsy bouquet. Centerpieces are also available. Bridges helps with any occasion, anytime. Follow Bridges on the Square on Facebook and Instagram or visit BridgesOnTheSquare.com. Remember, you bring in the spring with Bridges on the Square, your Magnolia flower shop. Hey friends, this is Lucas Cheatham. This time of year, everyone seems to be catching spring fever. Well, if you need a little more spring in your step, then Health Quest Therapy is here for you. My mom, Christy, and her team at Health Quest Therapy provide physical, occupational, and speech therapy and will have you ready for those spring activities. Visit healthquesttherapy.net or call today at 870-234-2255. Health Quest Therapy, 1515 East Main and Magnolia. 
Offenhauser and Company Insurance has been an integral part of South Arkansas for over 138 years by providing quality insurance coverage including home, auto, business, health, and specialty insurance from the finest carriers with an in-house claims department and the very best of service. Offenhauser is proud to help sponsor SAU Mule Rider Sports. Offenhauser and Company Insurance. Offices in Texarkana, Atlanta, Mount Pleasant, San Antonio, and Austin, Texas. Your insurance leader since 1882. Reed Osborne will be the new pitcher for SAU. Six foot four, 210 pound senior out of Louisville, Texas. Previously played at the University of Houston. His statistics on the year, 5.91 ERA. He has a 2-0 record. This will be his eighth appearance. He has pitched 10 and two-thirds innings, given up 11 hits, seven earned runs, three walks, eight strikeouts, and opponents are hitting 256 against Reed Osborne, and he finds himself in a tight spot here. Not only are the bases loaded with two out, but he also inherits a two-ball, no-strike count from Chance Bolter. Means he's going to have to come in with a strike. Yeah. And they're, gonna, they're gonna be looking first pitch swinging. So, yeah. boy, if you've got something other than a fastball that you're confident can, can get over for a strike, now would be the time to use it. Yeah, I wouldn't throw that fastball down the middle. After the game, we'll name our People's Bank player of the game. Bank on the go with People's Bank's mobile banking app. Check balances, deposit checks, view transactions, transfer money, pay bills. Find the nearest branch and more. Bank wherever you are with your local bank, People's Bank, member FDIC. Ballweg back to the plate. Kid came in for Ben Erke. We'll see if he stays in the game. Erke was playing left field. Again, a two ball, no strike count. See if Reed Osborne can work out of this jam. Comes set. Fastball inside, and the count's 3-0. And, and again, nowhere to put him. Mule Riders already trailing by four runs. Last night, Ballweg played first base, and Mosser was in left, so I assume they'll move Mosser out to, out to left field when they take the field, hopefully soon. 3-0 fastball called strike. It pops out of the mid of McGee. All right, let's see. Three and one. Got to come in again. Yeah, you got no no choice, nowhere to put him. You're already up against it, down four in the bottom of the seventh inning. He kind of hit here, blows this one wide open. The uh, three-one. That one hit foul down the first base side. Good job by Osborne to battle back and make the count full. Maddox Solomon just took off down for the bullpen as well for SAU. He's going to throw. Looks like they're trying to not use Abrego or Liddell. Those would probably be the guys they may use one of those guys to start the next game. Full count pitch inside, and that walks in a run. JT Mix comes in to score. Move Rosencrantz to third, Dirksen to second, and Ballweg to first. Back to the leadoff spot, Max Mosser. Again, base is still loaded. It is now a five-run lead, nine to four. Augustana leading. That walk will go go down against uh, the previous pitcher. Yeah, Bolter. The pitch, fastball inside for ball one. Yeah, Osborne inherited a two-ball no-strike count when he entered the game. Got to get an out. Well, Base is still loaded. This game not over yet, but a second game this afternoon is looking more likely at the moment. The pitch, fastball, must have been a little low. Some of the SAU crowd disagrees. Again, your rider pitching behind in the count. Two balls, no strikes. 
Pass ball inside. It's 3 0. All around the plate there. Yeah, he's, he's just he's low, he's in. Uh, three and zero. Oh, you got to come after him here. Bases still loaded, full of Vikings. Another one out of the strike zones. Another run. The three zero, oh, fastball called strike one. That one looked a little low and away, actually. <laughs> I think the umpire may have gotten. Tired of some of the criticism back there and gave in a little bit. The 3 1, right down the middle. Strike two. Back some of that, back. I think, is encouragement for the pitcher, too, Osborne. Back to back full counts. Let's see if Osborne can finish off Max Mosser. That one hit out towards first. Actually went off the foot of the batter, so that one called foul immediately. We'll try it again. Pardon me while I take a drink. Go ahead. We're getting in dire straits on the on the cough drops. Not as bad as the announcer for Central Missouri last Sunday, though. I kind of felt bad for him. He was struggling through that broadcast. The full count pitch. Foul back and out of play. Baseball is one of those games that's a little easier to handle if you've got if you've got a couple of people. Because otherwise, that's a lot of talking. A, yeah, in a nine inning game. I don't know how you, the basketball games to me would. I don't know how you how you pull those off. Well, those they're not quite as long. Well, that's true. More frequent breaks probably. The pitch, that one hit hard out towards second, a diving stop by Sutton, who throws over oh. the corners. Four to three, outstanding defensive play there by Chris Sutton. And that limits the damage here in the bottom of the seventh, but Augustana attacks two more on the board as we head to the top of the eighth inning. Augustana leading the Mule Riders by a score of nine to four. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. Stay healthy in 2022 with Doctors Chambliss and Davis. They see patients of all ages from newborn to elderly. They also do primary care, weight loss management, DOT physicals, cool sculpting, BioT hormone physicals, and more. They're open Monday through Thursdays from 8 till 4 and Fridays 8 till noon. The office of Chambliss and Davis is now accepting new patient applications with most insurances accepted, including United Healthcare. Follow Doctors Chambliss and Davis on Facebook for details. Doctors Chambliss and Davis, 1701 East North Street in Magnolia. Become one of the many satisfied patients who use Prince Pharmacy in Magnolia. Refilling your prescriptions is easy with Prince Pharmacy's new mobile app. You can also refill or transfer prescriptions on their new website, PrincePharmacyRx.com. Prince Pharmacy still has their 24-hour refill line, too. Call 234-7292 anytime. Prince Pharmacy also has a convenient drive through and free delivery in the Magnolia city limits. See how they make a difference at Prince Pharmacy in the southern Medical Group Clinic at 211 East Stadium in Magnolia. Ever wonder what life would be like without frozen drinks and slushies from McDonald's? Actually, let's not go there. It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. Get a medium frozen Coca-Cola or Fanta for $1.69. Goes great with a fresh beef quarter pounder with cheese or crispy chicken sandwich. Participate at McDonald's for a limited time. Fresh beef available at most restaurants in contiguous U.S. Not available in Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territories. Tanner Brown back to work for Augustana. He's the starting pitcher, and after some early hiccups, he's had it rolling. It's going to be Tucker Burton, Chris Lyles, and Connor Allen due up for SAU. The first pitch is fouled back and out of play by Tucker Burton. SAU needs base runners. They need to put up a crooked number here in the eighth inning. Yeah, Mule Riders down by five. Down by five. Also would like to make Augustana use their bullpen a little bit. Next pitch up in the zone. He just count one ball, one strike. Again, so far they have not had to dip in. To the bullpen is Tanner Brown. Give him give him credit for battling back. 1-1. One, one. That one stays inside. Two balls, one strike the count. 
Augustana yesterday used Ryan Jairs, the starter. He did not go long. In fact, he did not make it out of the second inning. Seth Miller pitched quite a bit. That one lifted high and deep to right field by Tucker Burton. A solo shot to lead off the top of the eighth inning. Tucker Burton, home run number 20 on the season, and it is a 9-5 ball game. Well, I hated seeing him coming in. You feel like he was due to hit one out, but uh, you hate it in a leadoff position. You'd sure like to have some runners on for that, but but that's a start yeah, anyway. That, that gets the crowd into it. Maybe that'll get, uh, get the offense fired up a little bit. Yeah, you're exactly right. Let's see if that gets the bench and the crowd into it. Again, home run number 20 on the season. Okay, and that ties him for second most with, uh, t- with in a single season. With Rucker. Yep. We may need some more of those. <laughs> There's a bunt drop down by Walls. That's going to be trouble. Third baseman grabs, throws. Walls beats the throw. A bunt single, and SAU may have something cooking here at the top of the eighth inning. Bunt Follow single. up the home run with a bunt single, and yeah, say you trying to trying to get something going here against Tanner Brown. Yeah, Pumphrey get some base runners on there and try to get him shaken up a little bit. Pumphrey says 438 happy feet on that home run shot. Yeah, he went out there. I'm made. sure he, he's got he's got <laughs> points of reference. And speaking of points of reference, the entire infield for Augustana. Going to converge on the mound. and No coaches, right? They're no just, coaches. Just I, the infield. Yeah. They do have somebody. Uh, looks like they're coming to. They got instruction probably from the bench because they got somebody that got up in the bullpen to uh, start throwing, trying to buy a little time down there. Yeah, you're exactly right. They're trying to get that arm loose down there. After the game, we'll name our People's Bank player of the game. Refer a friend to People's Bank. If your friend opens any checking account, you and your friend both receive a thank you gift. Visit referpbmag.com to earn your choice of an Amazon gift card or the current featured gift. Free checking and free gifts at People's Bank. Member FDIC. Mule Riders start the top of the eighth inning. The solo bomb for Tucker Burton. A bunt single by Chris Lyles. And... Connor Allen comes to the plate. It is a 9-5 to five ball game. Augustana leading, but again, Mule Riders have something cooking, and now we're going to have a visit to the mound, and we may very well have a pitching change. There's been no indication yet. I'm telling you what, as tough as this guy's been, that wouldn't wouldn't bother me in the least to get a new pitcher out there. Yeah. Connor Allen was the hero last night late for SAU that put him on top with a Two-run bomb to left. Yeah, we're going to get one now. We'd have a two-run game. Yep, we're going to have a new pitcher. Right. We're going to have a new pitcher. So we'll tell you about the new pitcher after this. Augustana leading SAU by score 9-5. to five. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. The Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place are located in the heart of Magnolia, Arkansas. Wentworth offers award-winning services. Their cottages are homes large enough to comfortably accommodate 12 elders with private rooms and complete baths surrounding a shared living room, open kitchen, dining area, and spa. They recognize the importance of performing our jobs with compassion and providing comfort physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Celebrate National Nurse Home Week with the Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place. Visit cottagesofwentworthplace.com. Whether in a crowded gym, in the bleachers at the ball field, or sitting under the Friday night lights, South Arkansas is all about tradition. Since 1903, our tradition at Bodcall Bank has been to create lasting relationships with our customers and community partners. Local traditions, local leadership, and local decisions. At Bodcall Bank, we are your local team, and we are committed to you and our community. Bodcall Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Is there one place I can go for all my car, truck, and SUV needs? One place for all kinds of repairs, tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, oil changes, tires, etc., etc.? Well, yes, there is. Spitler Tire and Auto. You've been trusting Spitler Tire and Auto for 15, 16 years now, and they're still working hard for you. Call to set up an appointment to get your ride into one of their 10 service bays, and it'll be back to peak performance in no time. Spitler Tire and Auto in the Dairy Queen Shopping Center, 521 East Main in Magnolia. Big day of closet organizing, toddler yoga, scavenger hunts, jigsaw puzzling, and sledding down the stairs. Get Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box. 
two medium, one topping pizzas, five breadsticks, and your choice of pasta or wings. Sealed for your safety, all in one box. Choose contactless delivery or new curbside pickup at PizzaHut.com. The Big Dinner Box, from our hut to yours. Ask for contactless and curbside. Availability of contactless curbside delivery areas, charges, and minimums vary. Delivery charge not tip. Evan first comes in in relief of the starter, Tanner Brown, six foot three hundred and sixty five pound senior out of St. Peter, Minnesota. Give you his stats in a minute. Connor Allen comes to the plate. You got Chris Lyles at first base for SAU. First does have a 4.19 ERA. His first pitch, a fastball, fouled back and out of play. He has a 2-0 record. This will be his 12th appearance. Has pitched 19 and one-thirds innings. Giving up 21 hits, nine earned runs, walked six, struck out 22, and opponents hitting 259 against Evan First. First right-hander comes set. Off speed in the dirt, but good job by the catcher Dirksen to keep it out in front. Lyles has to stay put on first base for the Mule Riders. Augustana leading by score 9-5, to five, but here in the top of the eighth inning, SAU started the inning with the solo home run from Tucker Burton and then a bunt single by Chris Lyles. Trying to throw a crooked number on the board here. Pitch fastball. That one hit. Probably going to be in foul territory near the right field line. Everybody converging, and it falls safely in foul territory. The only one that had a shot at it, I think, was the second, second baseman. baseman. He just couldn't quite get there. Yep. First baseman had his back to the ball running all out. Right fielder just had too much ground to make up. and Boy, thankfully, that one fell in a perfect spot. So Connor Allen's going to get another bite at the apple here. One ball, two strikes. He's choking up on his bat, just trying to figure out some way to put this one in play. Raleigh or on deck. The one-two pitch from first. Off speed, and that one in the dirt. Another good stop by his catcher as Lyles, again, had thoughts of taking second, but that one did not quite bounce far enough away. So you're getting some kickback on your Jeff Jester, Cousin Eddie <laughs> reference. Is that what I understand? The, the beastly man is sending me messages. <laughs> Good lead by Lyles at first base. 2-2 Two -two pitch, fastball low. That gets past the catcher, and Lyles does. Swipe second base. That one got far enough away. Lyles had a good lead and a good jump. Once he saw that one in the dirt, he was off and running. So move Lyles over to second base in scoring position on the wild pitch. All of a sudden, we got a full count here to Connor Allen. Still nobody out. Come on, Connor. Go ahead and do some damage here. The 3-2 pitch from first. After a couple of looks back at second. Fastball, that one hit hard. Both the third baseman stabs it, throws across for the out. And, man, Connor Allen drilled that. And just give Barth credit. That was an outstanding defensive play there. Five to three with the put out. Lyles does race over to third base after Barth makes the throw across the diamond. That was an incredible defensive play because that ball changed direction. Yeah. It took and went up high on him as he was getting ready to catch it low. And then it took a high hop. And, wow, how in the heck he got his glove up there to feel that one and then gunned it across to get the runner at first. Yeah, that was saved a run and probably a double. Connor Allen, if that gets over his head, is probably going to wind up on second base. Riley Orr to the plate. Curveball stays high for ball one. Riley Orr, a 377 average on the season. He is 0 for 2. Walked and scored a run in the fourth inning. 1-0 fastball. That's hit into right field. That's going to score Chris Lyles. And we have a 9-6 ball game. Your Riders within three. And Raleigh Orr board at first base. The only one out. And we are back to the leadoff spot with Chris Sutton. Don't you ever count the Neil Riders out. No. 
So it's a three-run game now. Three-run game. Your runners have struck for two here in the top of the eighth inning. Almost felt like they had to score something here in the eighth inning to have a chance in the ninth. Chris Sutton to the plate. First pitch off speed, and he is out in front of that pitch. And that is the guy from yesterday. That's Seth Miller going to get, well, no, never mind. They're about four different guys, three different pitchers running down to the Augustana bullpen. They're going to be a couple of hitters away from being anywhere close to ready. Miller's just the lookout guy. The pitch, that one lifted into shallow center field. Center fielder comes in, makes the catch. And thought about throwing behind Raleigh Orr over at first base. But Carter Howell comes in, records the second out. Raleigh Orr scampers back to first, and they're quickly two down in the inning. That was a long run for the center fielder, Howell. But, uh, but it hung up there for him, and he was able to track it down. It's hoping that one would drop, but just a little bit too much air under it. Too much air. Now, we've seen the Mule Riders have some sustained two-out rallies, and we're certainly looking for one here. Brett McGee, the Mule Rider catcher to the plate. The shift is on defensively heavily towards the first base side. Pitch fastball outside for ball one. Just glad to see him facing a right-handed right pitcher here. He got the home run off the lefty Brown early in the game, but uh, he struck out the last two times. Again, ahead, ahead in the count. One ball, no strikes. And I switched to my lucky pencil, so I know it's good. Off-speed pitch inside. Oh, my goodness. He called that a strike? Yeah. No. That ball was low and inside. What? Holy cow. That, that was a terrible call. Well, I called it a ball because there was no doubt um, he by, any, right. by any sane person or anyone with vision. One and one the count somehow, some way. Pitch fastball that hit off the end of the bat over towards the third baseman who gloves it, throws across for the third out. Mule Riders do strike for two runs off of three hits. There were no errors, one left on base. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Augustana leading SAU by a score of nine to six. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. This week's At Your Service featured item is Seafold Paper Towels. These paper towels come in bleached white. Get 200 sheets per pack and 12 packs per carton. Shop local this summer and come by and see the At Your Service team today. At Your Service Environmental Solutions, where they know the power of clean. 1506 North Vine in Magnolia. Or visit atyourservicestore.com. What do I like about being a local agent for Farm Bureau Insurance? Above all, I like helping people, using my insurance experience to make Columbia County a better, safer place. Insurance is a necessity, and I take pride in helping people find the right coverage for all of their needs. I'm Mike Jones, Agency Manager at Farm Bureau Insurance. Give us a call at 870-234-1966 and let me or my agents show you how we can save you time and money. Southern Medical Group has expanded its family and is pleased to announce that Dr. Chase Helm has joined their practice. Dr. Helm recently graduated from UAMS and specialized in family practice. Dr. Helm will be seeing patients in all age groups. Southern Medical Group will be accepting new patients. Please call 870-234-5995 to make your appointment. Southern Medical Group, our family taking care of yours. Visit smgarkansas.com. The eighth inning, Mule Riders trailing by a score of nine to six over or with Augustana leading. Again, this is game two out of a best of three Super Regional. The winner advances to the Division II College World Series. If Augustana wins, we're going to play another game about 30 minutes after this one. If SAU can come back and get the win, then they will move on and advance. Reed Osborne on back to work for SAU. Carter Howell to lead off for Augustana. First pitch fouled out of play for strike one. Augustana fighting for their lives here. SAU able to score two in the top half of the inning and tighten the gap here. 
Osborne's next pitch. Fastball, that one hit high out towards left field, and the wind is pushing it, but not quite far enough as Lyles makes the catch right at the base of the wall on the warning track for out number one. He just quickly got to the wall and then found the ball back and uh, figured out exactly where it was, whether it was going over the wall or whether he had a play on it and located it and uh, didn't have to move a whole lot from from back at the wall. Yeah, he just had to wait. The wind now kind of gusting out towards left, left center a little bit. And you're right, it wasn't hit well, but it, it did carry to the wall. Jordan Barth to the plate. Barth made an outstanding defensive play in the top half of the eighth inning that probably prevented a bigger inning from SAU. That breaking ball inside that Barth moved away from. Yeah. Any mule rider hitter would have taken that for a for a hit by a pitch. <laughs> Two for four is Barth today. There's a big swing and a miss. Strike one. Strategy on different teams. Some coaches want you to take it. And, you know, get as many base runners as you can. 1-1. One, one, bar squares to bun. And that one pumps back into the screen and then darts out towards first base. As you can tell by all the hit-by-pitches on SAU's team, if there's one that's that's thrown close enough to hit them, they're, they're going to get hit. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to stick their hand out or anything but pitch fastball dribbled right in front of home plate and there's confusion between McGee and Osborne on who was going to get it neither one of them do so there's a swinging bunt single from Jordan Barth I don't think either one of them had a play on it the way they were that tough team. yeah I mean that was like a, a perfectly executed bunt is the, the way it ended up yeah, it's I always think. an easier play for the catcher going out to get that as opposed to the pitcher having went to too run far in. For, yeah, for yeah. him, he just didn't have a play. And Osborne, I think, felt like he didn't have a play. And again, a right-handed pitcher is falling away from that bunt that was just kind of to the third base side of the, the mound. Pitch outside to Will Olson. It's probably one of those where they had both players yelling at the other. Yeah. You take it, you take it, you take it. <laughs> Olsen looking for his first hit. He is 0 for 4. He did reach on an error in the seventh inning. Osborne Cubs set. Fastball outside, and it's 2 and 0. Barth not a big lead over at first base. The Mule Riders trailing by three. Cannot give up any more ground here. Osborne's pitch outside. It's three and zero. Oh. Continues to be activity in the Augustana bullpen, just in case the Mule Riders get anything going in the ninth inning. We're going to have Caleb Sorry ready to go. The three zero oh from Osborne. Fastball right down the middle for strike one. Looking out and seeing some empty seats out here, and I think a lot of it is that a lot of those fans have sat in that sun so long that they have moved down under that canopy to get a, get a little rest from the sun. That sun's wicked out there. It's about 87 degrees, sunny. And it's been a, been a long afternoon. And it may get longer. Oh, pickoff play, and they've got the runner in a pickle. The throw down to second, and it's off the glove of Riley Orr. That's actually Richardson that's in at first base for Machuca. They had him dead to rights, and Richardson made a good throw, and Riley Orr, I think, just tried to swipe the tag down before he secured the ball in the webbing. So yeah. give Barr second base. He's in scoring position. Yeah, they had him picked off. The throw was a little bit toward the third base side, but went off of Riley's gloves. So he got to go with an error, error on, the, I would agree. on the play. Well, that puts him in scoring position with one out. Yes, put Richardson in for Machuca at first base. 3-1 fastball. That one hit pretty well out towards right field. Connor Allen going back, looking up, and watching that one sail over the wall. And 
Augustana now firmly in control with the two-run bomb. It's going to extend the lead to 11-6 to six here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Uh, the two runs that the Muir Riders just got yeah. back in the, in the top of this inning. Now Augustana puts back up on the board to, to get that five-run lead back. Yeah, it always feels safer if you've got a lead of more than four. That way a grand slam doesn't doesn't tie it one swing of the bat, does it? Let's say you're going to have to have a massive top of the ninth to get back in this one. Still only one out. Jack Hines at the plate. Bases now clear. Osborne's pitch up in the zone. Hines two for four. Barth, by the way, was credited with a stolen base. No error. Hmm. Okay. All right. Not I guess, by he, I guess they figured he was there, even if it doesn't get off the glove. But I'm not sure yeah, about I, that. I, but no, uh, I disagree with that. Yeah, I, I do too. But yeah. I'm just telling you what the official scoring was. Two balls, no strikes. The count. It is looking like we're going to have another ball game here this afternoon. That pitch fouled back. Two balls, one strike. I think the last word we got, assuming there's not something miraculous in the ninth inning, which, by the way, SAU has... They've done that before. They've, they've done, done that, that a before. few times this year. So yeah. I'm not, not chalking this one up yet. However, we were told there would be a game 30 minutes following this one. That one fouled back and out of play. If Augustana was able to get the win and extend this series to a game three. Yeah, they'll just do the minimum of... Uh, field prep and yeah and jump back out there obviously both teams are plenty loose at this point this game started at two o'clock the two two pitch fastball swing and a miss strike three might have chased one out of the strike zone there may have that was on the upper end and that, that may have been a little bit high but Hines not able to catch up with the high heat there. They're two down in the inning. Yeah, so we'll have to quickly figure out who's going to start for each team, who's available. Of course, at this point, game three, everybody's available for the most part. First pitch high to JT Mix. I'm like you were saying earlier, Jarris for uh, for Augustana just went an inning in the third last uh, night. Yeah, so, I think he's you know, available. He might be available yeah. to, to at least give him some some innings. Now would be if Seth Miller gets any action, I would be surprised. Obviously, the starter Brown in this game for Augustana is probably a no go. There's a fastball in the outside corner. That may have been a little outside of the outside corner, but I think the Mule Rider fans feel like they're owed a couple of calls. Yeah, I would assume Brown is out. Obviously, the SAU starters from both the games are probably out as well. But I would say for SAU, it would probably be either Abrego or Liddell. The start, right. Yeah. But after that, if you've got to go to the bullpen, then all hands on yeah. deck. Yeah. One ball, two strikes, the count. Osborne trying to get out of the inning. Curveball in the dirt. Did the, I guess the batter held his swing, did not break the wrist. That was well short of the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Well, the Mule Riders are as close as they have come to getting to that national tournament, getting to the finals of the of the regional. Just need one more win. Uh, pitch that one fouled out of play down the right side. Look out, kids. Of course, Augustano won the national championship four years ago. They were here in the regional and advanced through that. They, they only lost one game in the entire postseason, and that was to SAU to force the, uh, if necessary, game for the championship. And Augustana beat SAU in that. And Augustana went and won the won the. To national two. championship. High and inside. Count goes full. So that's how close SAU was then. Last year, the Mule Riders 
made it to the finals at Central Missouri at Warrensburg. Well, and again, not not putting this down as a loss yet because there have been plenty of innings where the Mule Riders have scored five or more this season, and they've got a flair for the dramatic at the end, but it's going to be an uphill climb with three outs remaining. That one up in the zone, and there's a two-out walk issued to JT Mix. Rosencrantz comes to the plate. Somebody is throwing in the bullpen down there. Can't see who. It's the bright outdoors and the, the dark indoors or from looking in from the outside makes it hard to see and who is exactly throwing as the bullpen for SAU is indoors. First pitch outside, ball one. Rosencrantz is one for four for the season, a 284 hitter. Yeah, the crowd, a lot less excitement at this point. They're just resting up for the third and deciding game. That one popped up towards right field. Connor Allen appears to have it measured. He does. He gloves it for out number three. But Augustana does strike for two more runs off of two hits. There were no errors. There was one remaining as we head to the top of the ninth inning. Augustana leading SAU by a score of 11 to 6. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. You may have several financial goals, but can you reach them all? Rank them by their importance and talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor. Laura Kroll, Mark Wood, Steve Hardy, or Ethan Young. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Let's be honest, you deserve the best. Jimmy John's and Magnolia makes freaky fast, freaky fresh sandwiches near you using only the freshest ingredients. Stop by and order delivery or pickup from the Magnolia location next to Walmart for a tasty sandwich today. And while you're at it, why don't you choose some chips or a cookie and a drink and make it a combo. Whether you're in store or in a delivery zone, we'll always make you a tasty sandwich. Become a reward member by downloading the Jimmy John's app. Jimmy John's Magnolia, open every day from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's convenient to connect with your investment accounts online, but watch out for identity thieves. The Securities and Exchange Commission recommends several steps to protect your sensitive information. First, use strong passwords or passphrases. Avoid widely used phrases. Take advantage of two-step authentication if available. Avoid public computers to access your accounts. And don't click on links that claim to connect to your accounts. It could be a scammer. Talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor. Laura Kroll, Steve Hardy, Ethan Young, or Mark Woods. Edward Jones, member SIP. Let's say you with her three, four, and five hitters do up. Here in the top of the ninth inning, it's going to take more than that for the Mule Riders to rally and claim a super regional championship in this game. Nickel leads it off. The pitch to him. Breaking pitch, a strike. Nicholas walked. Had a bunt single back in the third inning. And a single and an RBI in the fourth. Reached on an error in the seventh. The pitch on the way. Breaking pitch. That one stayed a little too far inside. So one ball, one strike count. Machuca on deck. Actually, Richardson on deck. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah Richardson came in for Machuca at first. One-one pitch. That's lined out to center field. That'll get down in front of the center fielder. So there's the first runner for SAU as Nickel singles to center. Now let's put a few of those together and make it make it interesting. I think Hal for a moment thought about laying out and trying to rob a single there, then decided better at the last moment. Will Richardson will be the hitter for SAU. Again, he came in for Machuca earlier uh, defensively over at first base and he's the batter now for the Mule Riders here's the pitch to him he takes a breaking pitch on the outside corner for a strike Will on the year batting 271 has a couple of homers 13 runs batted in 
Right now, you just want him to reach base. Some more behind him. The pitch comes, and that one got away from the catcher. And the runner at first base, Nichols, going to stay put. He had it. He hesitated just long yeah, enough. That he thought by the time that he realized it got through the catcher that it was too late and he didn't want to get thrown out. So he stayed at first base. A ball and a strike to Will Richardson. And the pitch and a breaking pitch. Swing and a miss, strike two. When his bat just wasn't long enough. It yeah. kept breaking away from him. A lot of late movement away from the right-handed hitter. Farm Bureau post-game show coming up after the game. Again, if things don't change, we'll have another one for you about 30 minutes after this one concludes. Here's the one-two pitch from first. That's hit in the air out to center field. Center fielder Howell backs up, but right in front of the warning track makes the catch on that ball off the bat of Will Richardson. So there's one out. They say you down to their last two outs. Ty Manning will come to the plate for SAU. SAU trails by five. So even if Manning gets on and Burton hits a home run, you're still going to be behind by two. Yeah, base runners right now. Just give yourself a chance, make it interesting, and see if you can get some more movement in the Augustana bullpen. Oh, that pitch hits I think Manning. I hope he got his shoulder. I'm going to say that hit him very high. Yeah. He didn't act like he's hurt as he runs on down to first base. Yeah, so. he, did, he didn't waste any time. I, I thought that might get up towards the helmet. But well, I that's where I was, I was worried it got him, got him high there. So runners at first and second, one man out. Tucker Burton comes to the plate now for SAU. He is one for four. He had a solo home run to lead off the eighth inning for the Mule Riders. He digs in. Kevin first on the mound for Augustana. His pitch to Burton. Burton pops it up. The shortstop. They had the shift onto the right side, and the shortstop goes out. Out shallow center field grass able to make the catch and that is out number two Muir Riders down to their last out of this game two away two on and Chris Lyles will be the hitter for SAU well there's still a chance we're getting into the <clears throat> miraculous end of the spectrum if SAU can come back and grab this one well, again once you get into a second game you just you just never know when a team is down from having just lost and another team is up from having just won. You just, whole momentum, tough thing to get switched around. The pitch to Lyles is a strike call. So the first gets ahead of Lyles. It's a no ball, one strike count. Lyle's stepped out. He's ready to get back in. First looks back to the runner at second. Now a throw back there, and he, he almost threw it into center field. He did the old Efers pitch back to second base. <laughs> Thought it was going to go over the shortstop into center. It was, a, it was a looper back there. I think he was trying to throw it. Over the runner's head and Jack you know, Hines. Uh, if, if he was sleeping, he, he, yeah. he just got woke up as he had to he had to leave his feet to come down with that one. No balls and a strike to Chris Lyles. Now you don't want to don't want a game to end by getting picked off on the no, bases. No. If so, you don't want to come back to the dugout. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would that would be accurate. Now ready for the 0-1 pitch. Here it comes. Ooh, that's up over the head of Lyles. The duck underneath it. Getting a little adventuresome here late in this one. It was headed towards the ear hole. We are in the top of the ninth inning. A one ball, one strike count. Two on, two out for SAU. New Riders trail by five, 11 to six. Again, this, if... If, it, if the score holds, it would just even the best of three series, and we'd have to play another game. 
Here's the 1-1 one, one, way outside. Count goes to 2-1. and one. So all of a sudden, first is uh, struggling with the strike zone. And nobody up in the bullpen at the moment. And again, you would at least like to see them have to scramble and get back up and throwing. So Neil Riders probably need to get another base runner, maybe two, before they would get somebody up. Not sure. Yeah, back-to-back -back base hits would make this much more interesting. 2-1 pitch, Whoa. and he hits him on top of the helmet, and oh. that hurts as Lyles goes down. He reaches immediately. That hit him on top. It looked like it, it, it hit pretty solidly on the top of the helmet, and Lyles is still down as the uh, student athletic trainer out to check on him and Coach Pettigrew from third base out to check on him as well. Yeah, he went down immediately, and that one... That one right off the top of the head and almost went back over the backstop. That was definitely a fastball. That was... Lyles is, or excuse me, uh, first has been all over the place here of late with those pitches. And that was a fastball. Lyles gets up to his knee and they're checking on him. There, there are those questions you have to ask and find, yeah. out, find out if he knows where he is. And to, to find out whether he can continue. And he is going to first base. It looks like they're going to have a pinch runner. They, they, the uh, athletic trainer signals to the bench. And I think because she is walking with him all the way to first base. So I think he's going to get to first. And then they're going to make a uh, make a change. Bring in a pinch runner. Now they'll check him out a little bit more over there. Yeah, Coach the Pettigrew first base. going to have a conversation with him as well. Yeah, Coach followed him down to first base, and they're checking the top of his head. Well, I'm thinking at least he uh, was giving him the right answers early as they allowed him to walk to first base, but both walked with him. And now checking on him, and again, you gotta you got to ask those questions and see uh, see the condition of Lyles. I don't think he ever lost consciousness. It didn't. No. He went no, down, no. and he had his hands up on top of his helmet. No, he was moving around the whole time. I don't. I don't think he was ever out of it. Well, he's smiling now. That's good to see. As uh, as Ballway, the first baseman, comes over and and look. Here's the other thing. I mean, the bases are loaded. There are two out. But man, a base hit, and this thing gets gets interesting in a hurry. And there goes more action from Augustana in their bullpen, so, man, if Connor Allen can find a way to extend this game. Yeah, grand, even a grand slam would not, would, you'd still be down a run, so you need one more base runner to have a chance. That's right, just hit a single, and Riley Orr would come to the plate representing the tying run, but Connor Allen's got to extend this ball game. The pitch from first down the middle for a strike. So there have been two batters hit by pitch in this inning, Manning at second and Lyles at first. But first gets ahead of Connor Allen. And say you down to their last out. The 0 1 pitch, fastball, lined out to left field. That's down for a base hit. And they'll hold the second runner. You don't want to get thrown out at home plate, obviously, in this position. So they just go station to station as the left fielder, Mosser, gets it back in. It's Tom, 11 to 7 now. Tom Manning was shocked. He's Tom Manning's not used to stopping coming around third. But Coach Pettigrew had him hold up, and his feet went out from under him. And he had to scamper back, and all of a sudden, we've got the tying run at the plate now. Yeah, that ball was hit hard out to yeah. left field, so Monster got it back in quickly. Yeah, We're going to have a round that. visit, and I, they may go to sorry. Yeah, he's been throwing out in the bullpen. Yeah, he's getting, so, a, he's getting a drink like he's getting ready to come in. So. Well, the potential tying run now in the person of Riley Orr will come to the plate, and he will face a new pitcher for the Vikings. So here in the top of the ninth inning, making it interesting as Southern Arkansas with the bases loaded and two out. One run has come in to score. It's 11-7, to seven, Augustana. This is Mere Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. It's a blast, and your vehicle is clean. Rocket Fast Unlimited Wash Plans are the best way to keep your car spotless. Now our washes and plans are even more affordable. Did you know you can purchase our Fast Pass for the price of a single wash? That's right. Wash your car as many times as you want for 30 days for the price of a single wash. There has never been a better time to get your Fast Pass. Join thousands of others who already enjoy unlimited washing at all of our locations. Rocket Fast, the fast and easy way to wash your car. 
Magnolia Travel Center is the place to be. Get a spring in your step with our flavor to cup coffee machine that will have you ready for whatever the day brings. Also try the Flavor Shot Fountain Center with over 250 drink combinations. Happy hour from 2 till 6 p.m. How about the frozen yogurt with topping bar, hot dogs, daily breakfast, and champs chicken, home style lunch combos, kids meals, and more. Grab and go with our fresh fruit, salads, and pizza served all day. It's all happening in Magnolia Travel Center. Follow us on Facebook for updates. Hi folks, Jim Golden on Jim Golden Ford Lincoln in Camden. At Jim Golden Ford Lincoln, we say what we do and we do what we say. Honesty and integrity are the basis that our business is built on. At Jim Golden Ford Lincoln, we believe in our community and support our local churches, schools, charities through donations and individual efforts. Our award-winning sales and service department attest to the fact our customers are the number one priority. Take advantage of hometown deals and service where the dealer makes the difference at Jim Golden Ford Lincoln in Camden. So Augustana goes to their bullpen. Thomas Bruss comes on. He is a mountain of a man. Six feet eight, 280 pounds, a senior out of Rochester, Minnesota. He has a 1-2 and two record, a 4.12 ERA. This will be his 17th appearance. It's been 19 and two-thirds innings, given up 14 hits, 11 runs, 9 earned. He's walked 10 and struck out 22. Riley Orr represents the potential tying run with bases loaded and two men out. SAU trails 11-7. Orr steps into the box. He is one for three with a walk. Bruss comes to the plate. Fastball is low for ball one. That guy, he is He's big. Looks more like a left tackle than a pitcher. Yeah, he He's is six eight two eighty, imposing on that mound. One ball, no strikes to Orr. Another pitch coming. Fastball, swing and a miss for a strike. So one and one to Riley Orr. Well, two pitches, both fastballs. See what he does here. Yeah, what, Randy Johnson's, what, 6'10"? Yeah. I think. I think you're right. I don't know that I've seen one taller or, or another one that, that height. This, yeah, he's a big fella. But he throws hard, too. A 1-1 pitch to Orr. Orr hits it on the ground. And still right to the second baseman. It'll get through into center field. One run scores. Here comes the second runner. The runner from first. Allen around to third. So Riley Orr hits one just out of the reach, just off the end of the glove of the second baseman, J.T. Mix, to drive in two. All of a sudden, it's a two-run ball game. You got Chris Sutton coming to the plate. Men at the corners here. Sutton has struggled in this series, so let's see if he can come up with a big-time hit for SAU here. So three runs have scored in the inning and another visit to the mound. Now they got Sorry getting loose again. He's been up and down at least four or five different times in this ball game. So Allen's at third. Orr is at first. Again, Orr represents the potential tying run over at first base. Chris Sutton coming to the plate for SAU. What do you think? You try to steal second? If the opportunity presents, I think obviously anything that goes off the bench, you've got to be looking to work in the scoring position. Although Sutton, you know, Sutton's got some pop. He's got six home runs yeah. on the season, but again, much more likely that he's going to be going to get a base hit as opposed to leave the yard. So I think, yeah, I think you look for opportunities here. Obviously, you got a pitcher that's six foot eight. It's going to take him a while to unwind. He's not going to be real quick to the plate. Wild pitch would be nice. Get yes. that runner down to second base. And again, Raleigh's got good speed over at first. The pitch to Sutton. The fastball is a strike. Well, that was close to a balk. <laughs> I'm not sure he came set. Of, over the inside part of the plate, about knee high to Chris Sutton. Sutton one for five on the game. Yeah, Coach Pettigrew gave a long series of signs there. So let's see if the Mule Riders have something cooking. Here comes the 0-1. He checked his swing, took an off-speed pitch, called strike. 
Crowd didn't agree with that one, neither did Sutton. Looked outside, but you got to be defensive here. Sutton in the hole, no balls, two strikes to Thomas Bruss. Muir Riders down to their last strike. The pitch from Bruss. Runner goes from first. Hit to the right side. That's through for a base hit. And the runner from first or all the way around to third as the runner scores. So now the potential tying run standing at third base. Boy, Chris Sutton comes through to a big spot there. Like he said he'd been struggling, but boy, when it counts, he chips were down on the table. He went the other way on an 0-2 count. And the Mule Riders still have life in the tying run now 90 feet away from home plate, and we may have another pitching change. Yeah, they had the wheels turning there. Had the hit and run on. So first and third, the potential go-ahead run at third at first base. Now the potential tying run at third. It's 11 to 10, and we will have a pitching change as the Mule Riders will be sending the ninth man in the inning to the plate against this new pitcher, and I believe that is uh, Caleb Sari, who will be coming into the game for Augustana. We'll take a break. This is Mule Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. Hey everybody, this is Christy Way, owner of Mule Kick in Magnolia. Everybody knows that Mule Kick was voted one of Arkansas's top dining experiences for the past two years. But did you know that in addition to pizza and wings, craft beer and coffee, our managers have been expanding our catering ability to provide a perfect business lunch, either at your location or ours. Call 870-562-2600 today and ask for Matt or Jim. You can also visit MuleKickMag.com. It's Mule Kick, never business as usual. Bailey's Body Shop is your one-stop shop for collision repair. They can do it all, from handling the estimate for you to getting the information to your insurance company. Owner Danny Bailey has been doing auto body work for over 40 years, and Bailey Body Shop is built on quality and trust. You don't have to worry about it. They're there when you need them. When you need collision repair, trust Bailey's Body Shop, 2416 North Vine in Magnolia, 234-3303. If you're dreaming of owning a new home, let the dream team at People's Bank help. Since 1910, we've helped customers afford the home of their dreams, and we love what we do. People's Bank has some of the lowest interest rates around, even lower than what you might find online. With the down payments as low as 5%, our experienced and friendly loan officers make home ownership easy and affordable. Put our dream team to work for you. Come by or give us a call at 234-5777. People's Bank. Building dreams, one loan at a time. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The new pitcher for Augustana is Caleb Sari. Again, spelled S-A-A-R-I. He comes on to try to put out the fire here in the top of the ninth inning. Sari with a 2.75 ERA, a 7-3 record. He's been used a lot as a starter this year. This is his sixth time in relief does have a save. This would be a save opportunity for him. And he will face Brett McGee, ninth man to bat in the inning for SAU. McGee could put the Mule Riders on top. Base hit ties it. Shift on to the right side. The left-hander McGee up. The pitch from Sorry. McGee looked at it low in the dirt. Good block by the catcher. Sorry to Keep it right there. Sorry, 6'5", 225. Out of Moorhead, Minnesota. Well, I don't guess they recruit anybody under 6'3", do they? <laughs> He's a big fella. <laughs> He's another big guy, isn't he? Of course, he looks a little smaller after Bruss. That's true, but... 6'8", yeah. 280. All right, Brett McGee. A one ball, no strike count. The pitch comes. He swings. It's it. Comeback kids, the cardiac kids, there's just no quit in them. Down five coming into the ninth, and now they've put up a seven spot and taken a two-run lead. Brett McGee, Mr. Clutch, coming through again. How about those riders? 
Well, I wasn't sure if Rosencraft was going to come down with the baseball out there or not, but uh, unbelievable. <laughs> that was Gary's second home run of the game for Brett McGee. Wow. So the Mule Riders have come from five down to go up by two. Yes, door. And, and all this with the biggest part of it with two outs. And the hitter for SAU is Brandon Nickel takes one low for ball one. Glad I kept Bowen up here. We scored all the runs with him sitting here, so I wouldn't let him go back out and play. A good luck charm. <laughs> Swing and a miss at an off-speed pitch. One ball, one strike. Wow. That's a... Have you ever seen anything like the Mule Riders postseason and the come from behind? It's... The 1-1 one, one in there first strike. One ball, two strikes. Well, maybe Z uh, Bowen's like Zach, and it's fitting on Zach Harrington's wedding day. Zach used to be our good luck charm in the booth. <laughs> Years ago. Well, again, Mule Riders up too, but again, Augustana still got one more at bat. Oh, yeah. One, two pitch swing and a miss as Nickel goes down swinging. And that retires the Mule Riders, but they'll carry a two run advantage into the bottom of the ninth. It's 13 to 11 SAU. This is Mule Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1 from Jennifer's for making the Blossom Festival great again. Jennifer's was glad to see you and thanks for stopping by. Also, good luck to the Mule Riders this week. Stop in at Jennifer's and check out what's new and exciting for summer. There are lots of new arrivals like new Alley Miles tops, new John Mark tops, beautiful new dresses that are great for summer, and much, much more. So stop by and take a look at Jennifer's on the south side of the Magnolia Square. Open all week, but closed Memorial Day. 24 Four hours a day, seven days a week. The experienced team at Southern Caregivers provides expert care to you and your loved ones. Southern Caregivers also provides needed support for seniors, allowing them to remain in the comfort of their own home and maintain their independence. Nurturing and caring companions can be matched to meet emotional, spiritual, and physical needs of the individuals they care for. Call 501-463-9990 today and speak with one of our professionals or visit southerncaregiversar.com. Your locally owned and operated Domino's is open. Domino's is open for carryout at the drive through and delivery. Domino's has contactless options for delivery as well as carryout. Call Domino's in Magnolia at 870-234-4141 or order online at dominoes.com. Domino's is open 1030 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 1030 to midnight Friday and Saturday. Domino's on East Main in Magnolia. Thank you for shopping all local businesses. Isaiah Haynes will come on and try to nail it down for Southern Arkansas. Haynes for the uh, the Mule Riders is a 5'11", 195-pound sophomore out of Katy, Texas. Give you uh, that young man's numbers on the season for uh, SAU. If I can find them, there they are. He does not have a win or a loss. A 5.65 ERA. He's the saves leader on this Mule Rider team with four. This will be his 10th appearance of the season. He's walked nine, struck out 24 in 14 and a third innings of work. I'm still trying to catch my breath from the uh, top of the ninth. Is that an unbelievable <laughs> comeback or what? Seven runs. With two yeah, I didn't give you the numbers. It was, I mean, the Mater Rogers sent 10 men to the plate in that ninth inning. They scored seven runs on five hits. First, the big blow, the grand, sl or not the grand slam, but three-run homer from Brett McGee out to right. There's still work left to do here, though. Augustana is not, not going to go softly. Gray Dirksen, Luke Balweg, and Max Mosser do up in the ninth inning. The number eight, nine, and one hitters as Isaiah Haynes is on the mound for SAU. Here's his first pitch. A fastball high for ball one. The thing you can't do is, is, is give them freebies. Freebie your base runners. Yeah, especially with nobody on base. You've got to be aggressive in the strike zone here. A 1-0 pitch on the way. Fastball, that's low. Two balls, no strikes. And the crowd, again, just expressing their displeasure with the home plate umpire. I think 
enough of that to go around both ways, though. It's a two-ball, no-strike count to Dirksen. Haynes pitch, fastball down central for a strike. Taken all the way was Dirksen. Yeah, situation now, solo home run doesn't hurt you. So make sure you make them at least swing the bat. 2-1 delivery. Swing and a line drive out to left field. Coming on left field. Elias, he'll get there, and he makes the catch. That was sinking fast as Lyles was charging in. I mean, he was deep out in left field. He was, and he came just hammering in towards the infield, and he had to go all out to get in. Didn't have to leave his feet, but he was about a split second away from having to having to make a diving attempt. Yeah, that didn't hit the sweet spot on the bat of Dirksen, and it, it was dying quickly out there in left field. That brings Luke Ballweg to the plate. With one out, base is empty. SAU by two, 13-11. In the bottom of the ninth inning. The pitch from Haynes. He took a strike. Start him off with an off-speed pitch there. Between Herky and Ballweg, they've been on three times in this game. Bases loaded walk for Ballweg. His only time at bat. Pitch is high. It's one ball, one strike. Nickel, the third baseman on the edge of the grass, as the shift is on to the right side with the left, left-hander ball wig at the plate. Nickel, the only defender on the left side on the infield. The pitch from Haynes. Fast ball. That's a strike at the knees. So Haynes ahead on the count. One ball, two strikes. And now a shift as Nickel moves over to the, uh, to the right side. And they bring Orr over to the left. Yeah, we see him do that quite a bit when it goes to a two-strike count. Haynes looks in. Here comes the one-two pitch. He swings and he misses down on strikes. That's out number two. Now for the hardest one of all, can SAU get this last one? Haynes comes out throwing gas. He got the first two batters, a fly out to left, and then a strikeout. And now Max Mosser, the last hope for Augustana. The Mule Riders were in the same position. They were down to their last out, their last strike, as a matter yeah, of fact. a couple of times. Before coming back and, and taking the lead. Two out, base is empty. The pitch to Mosser. He looked at a strike at the knees on the outside part of the plate. Started him off with an off-speed pitch. I don't know how Haynes is doing this. I'm nervous. <laughs> he got hit on the count. <laughs> Haynes ready. Shrugs his shoulders. Now delivers. Mosser took it high. A one ball, one strike count. The crowd is on their feet. All the Mule Rider faithful are on their feet here at Walker Stadium at Goodhart Field with Max Mosser at the plate. Boy, a lot of nervous energy right now here at Goodhart Field. Isaiah Haynes delivers again. Ooh, that one a little bit high, and it's a 2-1 count. Yeah, did not miss the mark by much. Oh, I wanted that one. I did, too. <laughs> I did, too. <laughs> that one bad. Two and one. Sign comes in. Haynes checks the wristband. Now looks into his catcher. Here it comes. Fastball. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Now the Vikings are down to their last strike. Mosser steps back in the box. The season on the line for the Vikings of Augustana. Two balls, two strikes. Here it comes from Haynes. Outside, it goes full now. Three balls, two strikes. Boy, could it happen any other way than a full count? A trip to carry North Carolina on the line for SAU. Three balls, two strikes. Two out, base is empty. The pitch from Haynes. And it's up and in, ball four. A two-out walk for Mosser. That fastball got away from him 
from him a little bit. Mosser had to spin away from it. Yeah, Carter Howell, arguably the best hitter for Augustana, comes to the plate. Two home runs in the game for Carter Howell. He could tie this one up with one swing of the bat. This represents the tying run. Wind is blowing almost straight out towards center field at the moment. Howell bats from the right side against the right-hander, Isaiah Haynes. The first pitch to him. That's popped up. Maybe playable. Going out the shortstop. Coming in the left fielder. Lyles. He's there. It's a new one. And they're on the way to carry North Carolina as we got a down pile at home at the pitcher's mound. Unbelievable the Mule Riders. Seven unanswered runs in the ninth inning to take the lead by two. And the dog pile is on, and the dog pile is going to get ready to move to carry North Carolina as the Mule Riders are going to go roaring into the Division II World Series. First time since coming into the NCAA that the Mule Riders will be going to the championship series. Man, just unbelievable and doing it in style. This Mule Rider team, I mean, they are the come-from-behind cardiac kids, and again, they do it in exciting fashion, and it's just unbelievable the way they fight, they claw, and they stay in it. Even with their backs against the wall, there's just no quit in them. How bad can that hurt? I mean, you... You feel for a team that went into the ninth inning oh, five. with a five-run yeah. advantage and threw a couple of different pitchers out there and just were not able to get the Mule Riders out there in the top of the ninth inning. They sent ten men to the plate, scored seven runs to take the lead, and then Haynes nails it down. And I think all seven were scored with two outs. If not, it was at least five, but I think was sure a bunch of I think all seven were with two outs. The Mule Riders were down to their last strike. Yeah, they were because there was different times. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you're so right. So how about that as far as having your back against the wall? Not, not only being down, but down with two outs. And again, they just kept clawing, kept finding a way, and just unbelievable heart and effort from this SAU team. Southern Arkansas comes from behind to defeat the Augustana Vikings 13 to 11. And Southern Arkansas University will make their first trip to the NCAA Division II Championships in Cary, North Carolina. That'll start June 4th. Oh, my. <laughs> stick, stick around. We've got our Farm Bureau post-game show coming your way as the Mule Riders win at 13-11. to 11. This is Mule Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. Your husband is pretty handy to have around. He makes the world's best mac and cheese. He's in the Tickle Monster Hall of Fame. <laughs> And he can teach anyone how to throw strikes. But a busted pipe in a basement full of water? Honey, I think we need a plumber. Is a little out of his league. That's where a homeowner's policy from Shelter Insurance comes in handy. We'll help get your house back in order and your husband back to what he does best. <laughs> Ask Shelter agent Gary Don Farah about Shelter's home insurance options. Locally owned and operated, Wilson Bearden Pharmacy now offers medical synchronization so that you can pick up your meds on the same day each month. They also offer free delivery in city limits. Vaccines for shingles, pneumonia, and COVID-19 are also available. Need a gift? Check out Wilson Bearden's variety of knives, flags, girly girl tees, and purses. Stop by and see Ivy Moore and her team at Wilson Bearden Pharmacy, 134 North Washington, serving Magnolia since 1945. Magnolia Regional Medical Center is excited about the addition of orthopedic surgeon Dr. James Kevin Rudder. Dr. Rudder grew up in South Arkansas and has been practicing for the last 20 years in Hot Springs. Dr. Rudder provides full orthopedic services with specialization in joint replacements. Also sports medicine and sports injury and orthopedic trauma including breaks and fractures. Referrals or appointments are accepted. Call the Magnolia Surgical Clinic at 870-235-3200. Hey, you. Yeah, you. It's time to step up to the plate at the Corner Clubhouse on the Magnolia Square. Remember, it's a short stop away to experience delicious pulled pork smoked in-house, baked potatoes, burgers, 
a full bar, and the best ribeyes cut in-house over an open flame. The Corner Clubhouse is open Monday through Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Don't strike out. Satisfy your cravings with a grand slam at the Corner Clubhouse, 100 South Washington in Magnolia. Hiring someone you trust can be the hardest part of owning a business. At Bo Moses Trucking, trust has been at the top of our list. When you need to get precious cargo from one place to another without worrying about damage, delays, or lost freight, Bo Moses Trucking is the one to count on. Based in Magnolia, Arkansas, since 1999, we have the resources and equipment to take care of all your flatbed freight hauling. Visit us on Facebook or call 870-234-2803. Bo Moses Trucking. Trust us to go the distance. I'm Faith Armstrong. If you worry about your safety or your loved ones, Columbia County Ambulance Service would like you to know about CareLink. CareLink provides an instant link to emergency response every minute, every day. The standard version provides protection surrounding the home, and a mobile unit offers protection anywhere. The area covered includes Columbia, Hempstead, Nevada, Washita, Lafayette Counties, and Claiborne Parish. Call Columbia County Ambulance today to schedule your installation. Welcome back on our Farm Bureau post game show. Uh, we're still we're still pumped. Uh, Farm Bureau's deductible rewards program rewards their safe drivers with earning percentage credits on their deductibles. It's the only rewards program of its kind in the state. To learn more, just go to afbic.com slash drive down. Talk to your local Farm Bureau insurance agents. Mike Jones, Stephen Zorsch, Jeff Hansen, and Brett Blair for all of your insurance needs. So stick around. We're going to name our People's Bank Player of the Game as well. But wow, Mule Riders come back in fine fashion. They scored two in the top of the eighth inning. But then Augustana in the bottom of the eighth got those two right back. So they were right back where they started, down by five going into the ninth inning. And here's how it played out. And like Ryan said, uh, all, all seven runs came with two outs for SAU in that ninth inning as Nickel led off the inning with a single up the middle. Uh, Richardson flew out to center. Manning was hit by a pitch. Then Burton popped up to the shortstop. So there were two out at that point with two on. A hit by pitch for Lyles. That loaded him up. Connor Allen with, uh, with a single. And that should have driven in a run. I didn't. I didn't mark down an RBI, but uh, that should have been. Yeah, it was an RBI for for Connor Allen. They just went station to station. Then Riley Orr came up. He singled up the middle, just out of the reach of the second baseman, J.T. Mix. Talk about a game of inches. And that drove in two. Chris Sutton singled in a run. Then came the three-run bomb off the bat of Brett McGee that, uh, that put the Mule Riders ahead by two before Nichols struck out to end the, uh, the inning uh, for Southern Arkansas. They scored seven runs in that inning, and, uh, and Haynes able to do the trick in the bottom of the ninth and, and hold on and pick up the save for SAU. It's his fifth of the season. New Riders used four pitchers in this game. Wyatt Marr was the starter, went four and two-thirds, gave up ten hits, seven runs. Six of those were earned. Didn't walk anybody, struck out three. Chance Bolter then pitched two innings, giving up two hits and two runs, neither one earned. Walked two, didn't strike anybody out. Reed Osborne pitched an inning in the third, so he got him through the eighth, giving up two hits and two runs. And then Isaiah Haynes again came on in the uh, in the ninth inning for the Mule Riders. The bottom of the ninth got the first two batters with a fly out to left and a strikeout. And after a walk to Max Mosser, he got Carter Howell to pop it up to left field. And that was a Mule Rider winner, and they hang on for the 13 to 11 win. The, the losing pitcher for Augustana is Bruss who uh, didn't get anybody out in that ninth inning as he came on to begin the inning and, uh, again, didn't get anybody out. He faced the first six batters in that ninth inning that the Muir Riders sent to the plate. And uh, 
I take that back. No, he came on. Uh, he came on. Uh, the 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 other guy uh, first was still out there yeah. to start the inning. Bruss came on. Uh, later didn't get anybody out as he came on after first got in trouble first faced the first six batters and then the uh, the next two uh, Riley Orr and uh, and Sutton both singled off of uh, Bruss and then they went to Sorry who pitched uh, pitched a third of an inning but he gave up another run as well and uh, he gave up the uh, the grand slam to Brett McGee so Southern Arc but only only the one run was charged to uh, to sorry and they're still out the Muir Riders are still grouping out out there in front of the scoreboard picture taking and families are out there and it might be a while before we uh, we see uh, coach Pettigrew here in the uh, yeah, he's making his way place. over I think Jeff Jester has got him corralled right now there he goes yeah there Give he is the okay congratulatory hugs there to his pitching coach Anderson so you're saying he's getting a a police escort. That's right. From a beastly. Well, a, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a, you got the Riley dog out there and uh, the Riley or dog in right field. You've got uh, all the kiddos running around out there with the players. So absolutely festive in right field. And on the left-hand side, looking at Augustana, man, that is a great team that SAU just put away this weekend. And that's kind of the flip side of the coin. They're all saying their goodbyes and hugs and their, their journey has come to an end this season. Yeah, they got a long way back home, and that's a that is a long, long ride home to uh, South Dakota after losing one in this fashion in the ninth inning to uh, to Southern Arkansas. But the Mule Riders have uh, have picked up the the win, and they are going to carry North Carolina for the NCAA Division II championships. Yeah, and I think how, Coach Pettigrew is on his way. How about that? Just absolutely. Absolutely stunning fashion going in. Stick around. We're going to name our People's Bank Player of the Game before we get out of here. After we uh, after we talk with uh, with Coach uh, Coach Pettigrew. Well, what an what an what an exciting game out there for uh, for the Mule Riders again in an amazing come from behind fashion. And we'll let Coach Pettigrew tell you a little bit more about that. But he just uh, he just had to jog in from. Uh, from out, out in right center field from the scoreboard, so you might need a might need a little uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of a break here. Tell me when you're ready. Do I need to take a commercial break, Coach? <laughs> you okay? You had a police escort. You had a fine man bringing you in. <laughs> I've been no, battling. That was Jester. Yeah, I was been, I've been battling with you, Jester. You said right fine man. Throughout the game. somebody else out there? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That guy's awesome. Yeah, he is. Yeah, well, I called him a beastly man earlier, and, I, and he's he may never let me forget. He balances it out with the shirt that he's wearing right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's undercover. Yeah, he's undercover. You Coach, I'm telling you, this has been a team, and we've talked about it. How many times have we talked about this year? This team doesn't give up. And you're down by five coming into the ninth inning, and uh, it just looks like we may end up going to have to play another ball game. But uh, your guys didn't believe any of that, did they? No, that's that's the thing. I mean, giving up the runs there, you know, on the bottom of the eight could have been real easy for them to lay down, you know. But uh, like I said yesterday, you look up the definition of a fighter in that team picture, you know, that we've got. That thing's right there next to it, you yep. know, and. We got some big outs, you know, through the game and made some big plays. Chris Sutton's play with the bases loaded, you know, diving up the middle, being able to end that inning right there and keep them from scoring more. That's something that, you know, will go down in Mule Rider legend, you know, and that's something that people that probably incredible. just watching the game right now aren't thinking about it because they're thinking about the seven runs that were scored, you know, on the top of the seventh. Brett McGee's big home run, you know, but... Really, they just kept getting the next guy up, next guy up, next guy up, next guy up. Kept doing what they were, you know, supposed to do. And man, I'm proud as heck of them, man. I, it's we're not done yet. We're not done. This is goal number four. You know, we checked that box. Uh, now we're moving on to accomplish goal number five. Absolutely, but coach, yeah, and it it has been incredible. I, I look go all the way back too to that that third inning when you stole a run on them, and 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 uh, and who knows where we might have been had you not got that run. Yeah, you never know, and that's the that's the thing as a coach that you try to do. You try not to, like I talked about, you know, you try not to play the scoreboard. Now, obviously, there's a fine line between aggressiveness and stupidity, you know, and we uh, we erred on the side of stupidity a couple times. Base, you know, base running, you know, got thrown out at third, you know, to end the inning, and then you know we got lined into a double play, and 
you know, gave them two outs, and that was the thing that I was frustrated with, that, you know, I wanted to make sure that they earned all 27 of them, um, you know, but like I said, you know, you never know when that one run is going to be a big deal, whether it's the third inning, seventh inning, ninth inning, whatever it is, and, you know, every run counted, every play counted. And, uh, man, those guys just fought and came through in the end. And Haynes hadn't pitched for you, I guess, not since the Washburn game, but uh, he came out there throwing gas, and he, he was up for the challenge to get that save. Yeah, he was. He did really did exactly what we needed to. You know, their leadoff hitter, you know, is a tough guy, and, you know, with two outs right there, the crowd's rolling, you know, energy's rolling, and, you know, it just – chase ball out of the strike zone a little bit, you know, for ball four, and then, you know, did exactly what we needed to do. And like I've said a thousand times, man, we've got three center fielders out there in the outfield, and when that ball went up, like, I knew that if it was in the field to play, we were we were going to carry. Yeah. No, yeah, that last out you're talking about? Yeah, yes. I wasn't sure where, yeah, where yeah. that ball was. Uh, where that ball, was there like a maybe a, a, a jet stream up high or something? We saw several times in the game where there were pop-ups, and then it coming down, it seemed like to blow behind well, guys. I'm I mean, not sure what was You just got to know, that. like, I mean, our foul ball that we, you know, misplayed over there at first base, you just got to know that the ball is going to end up spinning back to the field to play on those high fly balls like that, whichever side, you know, it's going to, uh, plus the way the wind was blowing today. But, you know, it was a, it was a definite you know the wind played a little bit of factor in you know the game for sure but you know they barreled up some balls and got off some great swings you know on the other side of things and we were fortunate enough like i said to come out you know seven runs there in the in the ninth and then close it out and get ready to book our trip to carry boy needing a big hit there in that ninth inning i I, and I know you probably can't either. Well, there's a lot of guys on this lineup that uh, that you love to see at the plate, but probably none more than Brett McGee. Yeah, for sure. And just knowing that to get it to where we were, I mean, that was the thing in, in my mind is, okay, we got to get it to Brett or Nickel, you know, because I knew that we were going to, if we could just keep getting it to them, you know, the pressure would be applied in their dugout. And that's what I've said many times about this team. You know, when we start rolling a little bit, you feel that pressure. I'm standing right next to them. You feel the, you, you feel the, oh, crap, here we go again. You know, and, uh, you know, they went, well, they, you know, when they scored the two runs there in the in the bottom of the eighth, they sat their, the big boy down. And then, you know, we end up knocking, you know, the guy out in the top, or in the, yeah, the top of the ninth, and they bring the big boy in, and then we, you know, rattle him around a little bit, and then they bring their closer in, and, you know, Brett welcomes him to the game really quickly. I find myself a lot of times I'm sitting there looking, well, like this Augustana team that you're that you're playing against and some other teams that we played this year. You you look at their lineups and say, my gosh, this is a this is a wicked lineup. But then by the same token, you look around and you say, but look at ours. I yeah, mean, for sure. I mean, I, you'd hate to be a pitcher on the on the other team having to face these. Yeah, guys. well, I was talking to like Kenneth Tabor, Nathan Stubber, some of the guys you know that came back again. Man, I saw. Guys all the way back from, you know, the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, 2000, 2010, 2020, man, you know, all these Derek Wynn, Cannon Lester, you know, I could I could sit here for yeah. hours and talk about the guys that came back to be a part of this, you know, because they've come up short and we've come up short so many times with great teams. And, you know, it's it's something that just I absolutely love to see, you know, our, our just Mule Rider Nation is strong. Our alumni, you know, are strong. They know that this is a special group, and I'm really gr glad that we had it in Magnolia. That way our fans could really soak this in, you know, and, and soak in what we have. And that's that's something that is special. You know, that this is something that's never been done for before in our program. You know, NCAA, you know, going to the World Series. And, uh, you know, Coach Goodhart obviously laid the foundation for us. And you look out there on those wor World Series appearances, and he, you know, got three of them to his name. And, now we're fortunate enough to do one in the NCAA era, you know, and like I said, this is this was goal number four, and we've checked that box, but we're going to enjoy this one. We're going to soak it in as a family, as a team, uh, you know, and then we'll be ready to go. We'll probably take tomorrow off, and then we'll be ready to go on uh, Monday and just really focusing on who we get a chance to, you know, get a chance to play. Yeah, no, no uh, World Series appearances in the NCAA, as you said, and it's been... Even with the NAI, it's been over 30 years, so right. it's uh, it's time, right? Yeah, it is, and we, we've had so many different opportunities, so many great teams that just, you know, yeah. came up short, and like I've said a thousand times, you know, sometimes you just need a break, or sometimes you need this or that, and, you know, you look up, and baseball's a game of inches, you know, Brett McGee's home run, I think it, you know, was just out by about six inches or a foot, you know, it really wasn't a... A banger, you know, and so that's something that it's a game of inches. They made some, you know, plays yesterday that I felt like, man, we might be snake bit a little bit, you know, with some of the balls kicking off their gloves and going right to somebody or, you know, making plays that way. And fortunate enough, we were 
able to come out on top and then grind this one out. And, you know, this win, this win, these people that are here, they'll remember this forever. These little kids that are out here, they're going to remember that. You know, and our team, you know, they're, this is what they're going to be remembered for to this point. And uh, my job is to make sure that they're not satisfied with just reaching goal number four. When we started in August, we talked about our goals, and goal number five is attainable now. And we're going to be moving forward. Like I said, we're going to enjoy this one. We're going to soak it up. But we're going to move forward. We're, we're ready to accomplish goal number five. Talk about all the times that you've been so close. Four years ago, you were right here in the same position with Augustana. They end up going to carry North Carolina, and they win the national championship, don't lose a game. So, so. People, people who have been watching you and listening and whatever all year long to this team, yes, it, it is uh, it is a definite possibility that you can go there and win that national championship. Definitely. I mean, I, I told people, you know, the last few years that our region, you know, it seems like every time that we're in a in a regional, you know, whether it was the old GSC days and we were down in the, you know, Florida region or whether it's this one, you know, with. You know, the Northern Sun and the MIAA, it feels like, you know, you look up and there's just monsters all over the place, you know, as far as teams. And, you know, I think they won 47 games this year, you know, and obviously they're a great club and we knew what we were getting into when we got this. But uh, we're ready to go. Like I said, we're ready to go. Enjoy it and then get ready to check box number five. See you in Kerry, Coach. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you for everything. Seriously. Oh, thank you. Thank so, you. Enjoyed the, enjoyed the ride. Sweet it's, ride. It's awesome. It ain't over yet, is it? Exactly. Thanks. No, we're going to keep on going. Thank yep. you, Coach. Thanks. Uh, Coach Justin Pettigrew, uh, again, they are the champions of the Central Region, and they are going to Kerry, North Carolina. 13-11 to 11 is the final here this afternoon. Thanks, Coach. Take care. Good to see you. Thanks. Uh, 13 to, okay, 13 to 11, 13 to 11, the final, as, uh, uh, as the Muir Riders winners over the, uh, the Vikings of, uh, of Augustana University. I don't think I've ever been hooked by a coach before. Hey, man, that's, uh, it's been a long season, and that knocks out a big goal for SAU, and like you heard Coach Pettigrew say, they're not done yet, but, hey, to get, to get there, you had to win this, uh, this Super Regional, and, SAU took care of business and did it in in stylish form. And we were talking, we were talking about how many times have they been so close yeah. to getting there, and uh, so this is definitely. I mean, again, I'll, I'll repeat it. What I was talking with him about. I mean, here, uh, four years ago, Augustana won won here. They went on. They won the national championship in Cary, North Carolina. That is definitely a doable thing, especially for this team, a team that never gives up. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of folks talk about that, but my gosh, how many times has this team come back for a win, especially in the postseason? Well, it's not only that, it's different guys every time. I yeah. mean, you look, uh, again, Adorno has struggled a little bit in the postseason, and, hey, this team comes in and picks him up. You know, we were talking, you heard Coach Pettigrew talk about the outstanding defensive play by Sutton, and he was struggling at the plate coming in. And uh, he's down 0-2 in the count, and, man, he takes a takes a fastball with two outs, two strikes, bases loaded, and just laces one into right field. Just an absolute clinic on hitting. He comes through. How many game winners have we seen McGee have, Tucker Burton have, Brandon Nickel, Connor Allen? I mean, it seems like every guy, you know, when the situation arises, they're, they're up to that task and able to jump in there and get it done. So you're not just dependent on one or two guys. It's spread out, and, and this is just a loaded team where, where any of the players, whether it's from the mound or at the plate or, or defensively, can come back and strike. We could talk about this all night, yeah. couldn't we? Yeah. As the Muir Riders strike, and uh, they, they, they win it 13-11 to 11 over August. And just quickly, some uh, some numbers for you. Muir Riders had, uh, let's see, McGee and Nickel, each with three hits in the game. McGee, of course, with the, with the two home runs. Uh, Nickel went three for five. He uh, had a couple of runs scored in an RBI. Uh, let's see, Riley Orr, he went two for four at the plate. He scored a couple of runs for the Muir Riders. He drove in three runs for SAU, so he had a heck of a game. Connor Allen had a couple of hits for SAU as well um, and, and an RBI, so uh, fine fine game for him as well. And uh, some of the other guys, Burton had an RBI. Uh, Machuca had an RBI for SAU as well. And, uh, and Sutton also had had an RBI. He had an RBI single in that uh, in that ninth inning. He had a had a couple of hits in the game. So there are there are a, there are a lot of stars to go yeah, around for for this game. And again, 
uh, Mirrorwriters used four pitchers, and uh, Isaiah Haynes is the guy that came in and nailed it down in the ninth. Uh, just giving up the uh, the two out walk, but otherwise he handled them uh, very efficiently there in the bottom of the ninth inning. So Haynes picks up again the save for SAU, and that is again his fifth save of the year. As Reed Osborne got the win to go to four and zero, Bruss takes the loss for Augustana to go to one and three. And we need to name our People's Bank Player of the Game. We've already mentioned this guy's name, but kind of brushed over over him uh, real quickly there. I, I assume we're in. Yeah, we're in agreement on this. Yes, we're good. <laughs> Brett McGee <laughs> went three for six in the game. He had three runs scored. He drove in four runs. He had two home runs. He had a solo home run. Uh, well, first of all, he singled in his first at bat. The first inning came around to score as uh, Machuca drove him in. But then a solo home run, to, that was a line drive that went over the wall in right field to lead off the third inning. And then uh, they, they got him a couple of times, uh, called out on strikes and swinging in his next two at-bats, then a ground out to third. But, boy, when it was on the line yeah. in the ninth inning and you needed a big blow, Brett McGee was there to answer the call. A three-run homer over the wall in right field. To give the Mule Riders lucky number 13 on the scoreboard, and it held up. Man, I'm, so, I'm still, yeah, just at a yeah. loss. But, yeah, Brent McGee, I think it's a unanimous vote. Yeah, he's our People's Bank Player of the Game. People's Bank will donate to the SAU Athletics Fund in the name of our Player of the Game. People's Bank, the only bank dedicated exclusively to Columbia County. People's Bank, member FDIC. And, uh, folks, we're not over yet, but I want to thank all the sponsors that have been with us all year long for football, basketball, baseball. And, again, we got more baseball coming for you from uh, Cary, North Carolina. But really want to thank all the folks who have uh, sponsored all of these broadcasts throughout the year. And again, Brett McGee, our People's Bank player of the game. SAU goes to 46 and 11 on the season. Augustana's season comes to a close. They finish at 47, 13 and 1. So we'll give you information in the days ahead. Southern Arkansas University, MuleRiderAthletics.com will. We'll give it to you also from uh, from the uh, from the radio station, MagnoliaRadio.com and on our Facebook page and everywhere else as to win the Mule. We know where. We know where they're going to play yeah. in Cary, North Carolina, who their opponent will be and when that first game will take place. And of course, we will have it for you on Magnolia's Country 99.1. Final again here this afternoon. Southern Arkansas wins it 13 to 11 over the Augustana Vikings. For Ryan Phillips and for Bailey Black back at the studio, I'm Dan Gregory. So long from Walker Stadium at Goodhart Field.